I now call to order the work session of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs on Tuesday, January 31st, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. Roll call, please. Mayor Vadifiotis. Here. Vice Mayor Lund. Here. Commissioner Carr is absent. Commissioner Eisner. Here. Commissioner Kouyas. Here. Okay, a couple of things. Um, normally we'd be looking at um, excuses, uh, motions and things like that, but um, for the work session, our rules of procedure basically call for a regular session, so I'm gonna dispense with that this evening. Also, um, I think most of you have seen the memorandum from the city manager concerning Commissioner Lett Kuliana. He'll, he's here this evening and will participate if he chooses to uh, during this discussion. Uh, also, I just want to remind everybody, this is televised, I want to remind everybody this is a work session for the commission to talk to the staff and get some more detailed information that we normally would have at regular sessions. Um, there's no public comments here, but all these projects will be brought forward at public meetings, uh, regular sessions at some point, and public comments will be allowed at that time, obviously. so. Um, before we get started, there's one item uh, on the agenda tonight, and that's the discussion of city projects, including priorities, procedures, expectations, and communication. And um, let me just get some a little higher level comment. Um, last year for, for eight months, we pretty much focused on kind of mending things that we felt that needed to be mended um, there were some issues that were kind of awry and we put in place a couple of um, uh, resources to resolve those, uh, special counsel being one. Um, we're, we've got two good, couple of good interim city attorneys that are helping us with all of this as well. So there's still a lot going on and festering in that background, but um, at, after the first of the year, we just really, really need to start refocusing on what city governments are supposed to do, and that's serving the, the residents of Tarpon Springs, not dealing with these little skirmishes that we've got um, that, I don't know, you could argue that we inherited them, um, but they're there. So tonight's meeting, uh, obviously it's early February, not quite February yet, but it's February, we're getting into the year already. So tonight, what um, the purpose of the meeting is to discuss the projects and, um, and there's gonna be a lot of things that are gonna be said and stuff, and I'm gonna reserve my comments for those until y'all have a say, and, and we'll see how it goes. We need to kind of have some meaningful discussion here um, as far as ways of approaching this, which may be a little different than what we've done in the past. City manager and I have talked about this a little bit today. So um, without further discussion, I'm gonna for myself anyway, I'm gonna turn it over to the city manager and let him get us started on this. So go ahead. Mr. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, I just wanna elaborate, because um, um, we have talked about this, we both have reasons for this meeting. Um, first of all, sorry, this was one of the few times we would have three weeks in between meetings with being a fifth Sunday. So we had three weeks, really, but we do not have the luxury of having three weeks between meetings with all we got on the board, all we've been distracted with. So, um, the work session, we know from being in the past when the work sessions, it was the one chance that you had for the city manager and staff to sit with all five of you. Usually we do it upstairs and around the conference table, but obviously these issues, especially issues of projects, are very important for the public. So whereas this might be done by a conference room before, it's good to be done here because we want the residents to see this meeting, see our discussions. Um, and the work session is the perfect opportunity for us to do it. It's just time for city manager, staff, and the city commission as a team with all of our different roles, your roles as, as policymakers, our roles to carry out the day-to-day -day operation and institute what you give us to do. And this is a very important method. We did well, especially with planning, as, as the mayor talked about, you know, we knew very early from after this commission was put on board, we got your priorities, your positions as far as planning. A lot of them were planning issues, and we sat down at a work session, and we talked, and uh, we got a very good picture of what you wanted as the policymakers and where to go forward, and I think we, 
we carried that out. I've heard from this board that we've carried it out and brought forward the changes that were needed and the changes that you wanted in that area. Getting back to what's important, the projects and why we, we need to get that, obviously we've got a lot of things on the plate we've inherited and have gone on. We've got a lot of things upcoming. So we want to get that fe same feeling from you of everything related to projects, priorities, procedures, what you want from us. Get your view collectively as the policymakers so we can go to our role in carrying out um, your edicts and your direction and, and carry that out today. So while we're starting off with the presentation and stuff, this, this meeting is intent for an intense dialogue with all of us here. So we find out where you want to go and we want to deliver where you want to go to you and stuff. So um, I think we'll start off, it's okay, we'll, we'll start off what we talked about of presenting, but again, this is open discussion. Again, imagine we're around the round table in discussion of these items, and uh, I think we'll accomplish a lot tonight, and I think then we'll be able to carry out what we need to do for 2023 and 2024 um, with the many important projects that we have going. Uh, I'll turn it over to you, Bob, to start and uh, kind of give an update of, of where we are, what we have, what we've done, and uh, start sure. the conversation off. Sure, thanks. Uh, so. For those listening, I'm Bob Robertson. I'm the Project Administration Department Director. And uh, just a reminder, Project Admin is the basically the project execution arm of, of the city, city government. Um, I'm the director. I have two people that work with me, a project manager and an inspector. We're in the process of hiring the grant project specialist that the board approved. Um, we've had some difficulty, as many people have had, in hiring people, finding someone. Um, we, had a, we went through one round and, and didn't have success, so we're going through another round. We're trying to get that person on board. Um, that's a really important position, and I'm looking forward to getting that person hired. Um, uh, Mayor and City Manager, do you want me to just go through some highlighted projects and just uh, get Especially the ones that are important. We kind of all know the importance yeah. of to, to everywhere in the city um, okay. projects and go over those, and then we can talk if there's any individual ones we can talk. And again, I've got... Although he's project administration, some of the projects you see and and see a director, you got Tom P Function Public Works, Paul Smith and his team from Public Services. They're here to answer those questions as they come up with these projects of projects going on now or coming up. So, okay. just go ahead and give your overview of where we are with uh, projects beginning January 2023. Right, so we have a lot of projects that are ongoing and uh, some that are just getting started up. I'll highlight a handful of these. Um, I've been issuing a weekly update in a narrative form as well as the spreadsheet, uh, and so I'm going to highlight some of those that were in the narrative. I'll start with the, uh, the Pent and Gross Stormwater Project. This is the project out here by City Hall. Um, it, uh, as we know, we had the contractor walk off the project um, quite a while ago. We've been working with the surety to try to get a, a recovery contractor on board. Uh, they went through a process. They had one contractor make a proposal, and they rejected that one. They went back and got another contractor that has made a proposal, and we're waiting on their evaluation of that. In the meantime, um, we've been approached and have taken action on removing some of the debris that was um, the tree debris that was uh, left from the old contractor on the pond improvements that were to be that are part of this project next to the school. Um, that work is ongoing now, as a matter of fact. Um, but as far as getting a recovery contractor, we still are in limbo on that. So uh, I'll, I'll leave that as just an open. Well, just, just to add to that, we are to the point that you're probably going to see um, maybe as soon as the first meeting in February, but probably definitely by the second meeting of, of February. There are some decisions we're going to have to make. The time is run too long. There's a time for us to make a decision. Um, and we're going to have those options for you coming up real soon. Yes, sir. Because we're demanding we should have had, you know, we're expecting the results of this new contractor on Friday, whether it was a yay or nay. Um, we're still trying to get a hold of them as we're on Tuesday and we're still trying to get a hold and see where there is. But once we get to that point, um, it's time for us to move and it's going to be some uncomfortable ways and maybe some initial expensive ways to move but you know we have got to make a move and you're going to need to be making a, a decision on the different options we're going on so you're going to be seeing you'll be seeing the resolve of this hopefully approving and a deal with a new contractor to get going or or we will be bringing you the alternatives that that we have as a city to 
give some relief to these people, our residents on the street, and get this project done and deal with any legal issues or stuff, deal with them later. So that you'll be seeing that probably most assuredly in February. Um, why don't we, Bob, why don't you hit the real important ones? And then what I'd like to do uh, is just ask the commissioners your, their yep. thoughts as we go That's through we, each one. Yeah. Okay. And then after we go through that, if there's some specific ones, I don't want to call them lesser, but the ones that are not necessarily at the forefront of everybody's mind, uh, we can go back and address those individually. Okay. So uh, let me, uh, does any commissioner have any thoughts on it? Uh, Actually, the only comments I have are, the surety company seems to be taking their sweet time doing anything here. This is not acceptable. So if we're going to push this, uh, I guess my opinion would be we should push it sooner than later. It's just been going on way, way too long. Thank you, Mayor. My question was going to be, what is the normal time when somebody goes belly up like this and they just walk? Is or have, I, I'm, I'm asking and answering almost the same question as uh, Vice Mayor, um, because I feel that they have gone on way too long. And at a certain point, I've had conversation with the city manager about this. Um, we have to step in and take care of this, and then we deal with whatever legality has to be done afterwards. Um, the other thing is, at, at, you know, this negotiation could go on indefinitely. So I, I think unless they see that we're serious, why would they be serious, you know? So my, my question really is how long should these procedures take? Should be roughly about a year, and we're way past that. So I, I don't disagree with what you're saying, that we, it's time for some urgency. We've been patient, and I think we're, we're at our last, our last straw. Is there, is there no guidelines in the contract and the surety clauses in the contract that that specify reaction within a certain period of time? Not that I'm aware of, no. You see, I, I, oh, I'm sorry. I, what I was going to ask the same question is, in the future, when we do bring up another contract, can there be um, penalties put into place where they're paying possibly more for extended or downtime? Or, uh, I, you know, I, I know contractors have uh, encouragement to finish quicker, right. and there's also penalties for over overtime. Um, right. can, can we put that in, you know, in place when we set up a contract in the future? I wasn't yeah. here for any of these contracts. Well, we uh, do have liquidated damages, which are the penalties you're talking about for contract for for projects that go beyond their uh, their scheduled uh, deliverable date, but. Um, as far as imposing that on a surety, that, that would be new. I, I'd have to talk to legal about that. I, that's not. That's one of the I've things on the list. I'll turn to turn. The problem is they walk. We can't put do any penalties on them. They've walked off. Um, they've provided their insurance, which is a surety. Now dealing with insurance companies, as many of you know, has dealt with is almost like the difficulties of dealing with an insurance company. And I don't know what we can regulate, but that's definitely when we get a city attorney on board that's for future. Right. That we need is there. Can we dictate? in their policy that they have to get to cover, is there any way to do I have not heard of one, but yeah. th this doesn't happen a lot. No, it doesn't. There's not I mean, much precedent for yeah. us to get other people and say, what have you done in situations? It's happened recently. It started recently. We saw the big project on, on uh, 75 and uh, 56, 56 yeah. where they just walked off that complete interchange and just walked it off. And uh, I don't know, probably about six or eight months before they get back started again. But that is definitely a question that, that we've got again. I just don't know if we can regulate the insurance companies that insure these people. Yeah, and I'll say this, it, it's pretty rare. I mean, I've been, I've been in this business and engineering and, and projects for 25 years. This is the first project I've ever, ha ever had where a contractor walked off the job. So let's hope that it's the last, but uh, it's Well, the uh, only thing that I wanted rare. to uh, key in on as well is, and this was something I was thinking about prior to me coming in here, was we're in a unique, unorthodox time <laughs> where um, products and getting products could cause people to walk. So that's why I'm looking to Agreed. save us from this embarrassment again, um, because this is not our only project. All of the projects that we bid on, um, whether we stay behind or ahead of the contractor uh, financially paying them, mm -hmm. or whether the insurance company has to cover for uh, damages, um, there's a whole lot of damages that happen, so 
That's all I, I want to go in. Okay, Commissioner Kriyas. I, I mean, this is just one of these projects where, you know, as the procedures take place, well, I guess we'll have to be making some tough decisions, but, you know, this is a, an ASAP project. Whenever things come about, I'm sure it'll get work done. My, you know, my focus and if any influence I have with a lot of these capital improvement projects is just the timing of them, you know, certain roads and, you know, coming in and out the city and making sure that we can time them up in the, um, in a manner that's, you know, doesn't affect the residents as much. And so well, I just see how this plays out. I know staff is trying to do their best to get this project um, taken care of. Is our, is our grant still okay? It is, and uh, we, we're, um, we're extending the uh, deadline on the grant. It's, they call it a um, you know, no-cost time extension. So we're okay in that regard, um, but we don't want to let that right. linger too long. Um, just uh, as far as the time frame goes, uh, what are you willing to give them? Another two weeks, another 30 days, or what? Less than 30 days. Uh, I, I've been hounding them. I've got the attorney involved. We need an answer. Two, two weeks? I will Less. do my best to. I'm not going to promise, but that's what I'm going to push for. Well, we, we want our answer from, you know, that we were supposed to get last week. So that answer to this new construction bid is, is going to be the catalyst. Well, why don't, why don't we, uh, we don't need an agenda item, but at the February 14th meeting, why don't you okay. let us know what, what you're going to do uh, from the standpoint of everybody together. And if you need an action item, that would be the one to do. Um, and then you could let the commission know what's going on ahead of time. They can get with you privately, but, um, yes. you know, and, and we could all kind of uh, describe some approach to be taken, but I've, I've learned that that's got to be left up to the attorneys to figure that out. So, yes. um, but we're not going to get where we need to be with the approach we've taken. So now it's, it's, we're, at a point where we need to I'm do correct. We've involved Attorney Salzman into this thing now. We have. Okay. We have involved him because we knew yeah. it was getting to that point where we need Mr. Salzman involved because we may be taking some action. So, so okay. they're involved and get up to date. Yes. Is there a dollar amount attached to this security or is it just performance? <coughs> dollar amount. Um, the dollar amount is the difference between. Uh, uh, Maybe I may want to understand your Dollar question. Dollar amount for the what? What the insurance company up for for coverage? So my understanding, it's up for the val up to the value of the contract, which was three point what two, three point four million, yeah, and of of which one point eight has already been paid somewhere in that ballpark. So we're working with about one point six million to finish the project. Commissioner Kulianis, yep. do you have any? I want to thank Mark for uh, once again inviting me to participate, so I get that out of the way. Um, you know, I spent uh, a big portion of my career doing surety bonding financial statements, right? So I work with insurance companies all the time. These, you know, uh, putting penalties on insurance companies, is, it's, doesn't, there doesn't exist. But what you can do um, and this is something the attorney can do, and I've seen this done with sureties. These are performance bonds, right? So th these these contractors put up bonds. I'm, I'm saying this because maybe the public doesn't understand what we're, we're exactly what we're talking about. Um, when a, a, con a contractor is going to work on a project, he gets a he has to be um, bonded, and he gets a surety contract. This is a performance bond, and the bond is that the insurance company is guaranteeing that if this guy does walk off the project or becomes insolvent during the project, that the insurance company will step in, hire a contractor to fix, finish the project. It costs more money to, percentage-wise, if half the project is done and they walk off, it's gonna cost more than 50% to finish the project. You know that. Yes, and okay. that's what we're saying. So, but what, what I have seen done where, especially in situations like this, and Commissioner Eiser is probably correct that this, a lot of this is because of the environment we're in, mm -hmm. that it's hard to find contractors now, mm -hmm. and the surety company is probably throwing a number out there and nobody can, is biting on it because they can't make enough profit to bite on it. But what I've seen done is going to the surety company, and, and this is something the attorney can do, is negotiating a payout so right. we get the money and, and then we step. go and hire somebody and we fi and we finish the job so that can be done that's really 
So yeah. getting the uh, and I think that's where we're headed. Yeah, and that's probably where we're going to be headed. And you're, hit, you're hitting that nail right on the head. That's that's what we ran into. They, you know, they yeah. got one the first time around. They only had one proposal, and what what happens when you only get one? The numbers are usually big. Right. So we had to go out and really beg to get another contractor to submit, and they have, and we just haven't seen the number yet. So. So I think the, the answer is going to be right okay. on. That's probably the answer is going to go to go to the insurance company. Say, okay, you don't have to go hire somebody. Give us the money that you were going to pay someone to finish this job and will finish the job so okay. that may be Thanks. that so, may yeah. be the route um, before i referred to uh, and i know i'm going to get called on this uh, commissioner uh, or commissioner elect Koulianis is commissioner Koulianis, so he's still commissioner elect Koulianis, so for the record <laughs> you can even um, call me Mr. so or even John. <laughs> um, is there any other comments okay Next one. Next one. Appreciate the feedback on that one. Um, so the next one I'll talk about is the Sea Breeze Drive Sanitary Sewer Project. Um, this one has reached a point where we're at the really the final part of the construction, which is the lift station, and the lift station is always the deepest part of your construction in a sanitary sewer project. Um, I'm going to be. I have finally negotiated a, a final change order with the contractor. We're going to be bringing that to you on the 14th for discussion and review. Um, I'll get the backup out to you early on that for discussion, but uh, we ran into a lot of crazy things out there during construction. I've mentioned this before where we had um, essentially artesian conditions at a couple of places where dewatering was nearly impossible. Um, so this contractor has taken it on. Um, they've been able to get through it. Um, the change order I'm going to present to you is going to have some reimbursable stuff. We're going to apply for FEMA reimbursement because some of what they did was related to hurricane prep and recovery. And there's some allowances in there that I'm going to ask you for that I will d explain and justify uh, when the time comes. So really only just wanted to let you know that we're getting there. We're almost there. And I'm going to be uh, bringing more detail to you on that one before the next meeting. Okay. Any thoughts, anybody? We're not going to run into this on the, on the other, on the other, uh, the Bayshore project, are we? I don't think so, but, um, the good thing about that particular project is we're not doing a gravity sewer, so we don't have to be as deep. Everything is going to be pressure sewered, which is pressure main, which is uh, about 36 inches of cover all the way down the line. So I'm going to say very unlikely. <laughs> um, something is tickling my brain saying there's going to be additional costs to this project. <laughs> that we're going to have to address at some particular time. What are, what's the nature of that? Yeah, that's the change order I was just describing to you that I'm going to be bringing in, um, in more detail. Yeah, there's some uh, extra costs that we encountered that we weren't expecting. Is this stuff we didn't plan for, or is this stuff that the contractor's going, I can't do this, or? It was, it was I would say, just it was unexpected conditions. Um, we did the best we could. To, you, you can't always get all the information pre-construction. Pre, pre you, know, you can do a lot of test borings, but you can't always hit the, you know, hit the right uh, pocket. And we do the best we can. But in this case, uh, because of some of that, we're, we're going a little deeper on the lift station. Um, you get more value out of that. I'm going to explain all this in detail. I don't want it to bog you down here. But um, so we're going to get a little more storage volume out of the lift station, makes it a little bit more re resilient. Um, but that's going to cost a little bit more, too. I won't upstage you, but it's Please nowhere you. near what the contractor wanted. <laughs> it's, it's seriously negotiated. That's when you see the figure, which still is a figure you're not going to like to see, but it was nego it was up to the contractor. It would have been a lot higher. That's why it's taken, unfortunately, it some time yeah. to, <laughs> to work it out. Um, and again, we'll have a further explanation on the agenda item on the 14th, the reasoning, the causes, and why we think to move forward and get this done this agreement is fair to the city and to the contractor. Um, so we'll have more information for that. Are we going to see delay out of Duke Power? Because I understand the power hasn't been run for the lift station either. I hope not, but I'm afraid we might. Um, you're right. We have to. We, they have to install new lines. They got to bring in um, median voltage to, to for that lift station. Oh, three phase. Excuse me. We don't have three phase there now. So. Um, we're we're also pushing on that. It's a lot of a lot of plates to move here, and that's one of yeah, them. Yeah, I understand that. It's uh, Duke Power pushing back on this, or are they just taking their own sweet time? No, it's just a, it's the latter. It's taking their time. Is there anything we can do to speed them up? I'd much rather have the power there without the lift station <laughs> being there than the other way around. 
uh, yeah, we can call them more. <laughs> Maybe a board resolution? I don't know. <laughs> He's kidding. I am. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. So are you saying there's not, uh, are you saying that there's not three phase there on the whole block, or it's just not run to the to this lift station? To the lift station, yeah. The lift station doesn't have what it needs. So, so are they able to give you any estimated time to do this? Uh, I understand that it takes something like six to 10 weeks for it to actually be completed. So once they start, the time delay won't be too long. But um, I don't have that scheduled just yet. It I'm takes here. that long to do? I gotta put new power poles in all the way from um, Riverside. Now, I'm going to ask the silly question. They couldn't have done this all during this time period? Well, uh, they probably could have, except that there was a lot of excavation going on up and down the street, and I, I think that they didn't really want to be in the way of the, uh, <laughs> the, the road being dug up and the pipe being installed. So there's probably some risk there that they wanted to avoid. Is there it's, any way to expedite this? I mean, you have people there that, um, I, you know the stories, I don't have to repeat sure. them. Yeah, I know, you're out there a lot. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm there almost every day. Yeah. And it's, I, I, I don't see the progress, believe me. Um, you know, I see the paved roads, I see the sand, I see the pivot, you know, the pivots in the road. Um, I mean, these people have been through the mill and back. Is there yeah. no way to push this? Um, well, we're almost there. All I can say is I, I can keep pushing and I'll do the best I can. I'm just following this discussion, no comment at this time. Yeah, no, I, I think, um, I mean, with regard to the, the, what I'm, the only thing I'm concerned about is, is um, we've, maybe I'm wrong, has there been a couple of leaks or anything that has, they've had to go back and repair oh, yeah. since the lines have been put in? Yeah, uh, a couple of minor leaks where the, the new water lines were. But nothing significant or anything? And, no. Okay, is that? pretty usual for the work that we're, okay. It is, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, all I get concerned about is we put all this nice asphalt down there and then we wind up um, having Tearing to, it up again, to yeah. repair things and stuff. And um, all, yeah, all I assume all our stub outs are there, so it's just mm -hmm. a matter of time. Once the lift station's up, people can start connecting. Correct, okay. and um, reclaim water too. Remember, that was a part of this project as well, so. Uh, uh, reclaim water, uh, they can yeah. do that earlier though, right? Um, I suppose they could, yeah. I mean, yeah. we don't need three phase for up. reclaim. I think it's just connecting it to the, okay. Sure. All right, that's all I have on that. Would it help for us to uh, reach out to uh, external politically connected people to move Duke along on this project? It could help, yes. With Duke over my years and stuff, that has not been successful, but there's, you know, be honest, we can we might be able yeah. to try, but Duke is too big even for that a lot of times, so. Yeah. I think we'll get there. I think we'll get there. He's going to put his firm face on when he deals with Duke about the timeline of this project and hold up, and he's not going to be smiling like he's going to be in his non-smiling face um, as we deal with Duke to get this going. <laughs> Uh, right. Commissioner Lacoulianis, do you have anything? No. Okay, Thanks. we'll go to the next one. Yeah. Next one. Okay, a um, couple of better news projects. The um, Working on the design of the MLK intersection at South Spring, um, I received the 60% design uh, plans. I reviewed them. Um, I provided some comments back to our engineer. Um, we're still on track for the end of March for 100%, and we'll get it out to bid. Um, as far as I can tell, based on my conversations with the county, we're still ahead of the Beckett Bridge project, and we should be able to be uh, finished construction before the Beckett Bridge construction starts, which we know is very important to avoiding the same de detour at the same time. A question came up when I was talking to the mayor. I'm sure he was probably going to ask it, so I'm probably jumping with the mayor. So, yeah, but yeah. The, per the necessary permitting we're going to need after we get going, is, the, is that anticipated on being a time of delay or a problem? That's a fair question. Um, we're starting the permitting now, and um, 
what I, I don't always do this, but we can put a project out to bid while we're waiting on our permit to be received um, so that we can have parallel path that. It, it helps me expedite the project. And if something were to come in that needed to change the project based on what the permitting agency says, we can amend the bid, extend the time a little bit for, for bidders to respond. I've had good luck with that. Um, it helps shorten the, uh, the whole procurement process. So I'm not too worried about that being a, a major holdup. Is it slowing it down, the fact that we're probably trying to somewhat accommodate the design of, of whatever we're going to come up with for Whitcomb? No. Is that not slowing it down? Good. Not an issue. Glad to hear that. Yeah. So if we can apply for the, the, um, the Corps of Engineers <coughs> designation now and then start applying for permits after we get their uh, designation and stuff like that before we bid, I would tend to want to do that now. Sure, yeah. Okay. Um, do you have more to say on that? No, I don't. Okay. So. I do. Thank you. Um, quick question. How many engineers do we have working on these projects? Uh, how many engineering firms? Yes. Uh, um, I have two engineer record contracts. Um, but that's not all we have. We have utilities engineer record contracts. There's two of those. Um, so I think we have four engineering firms that are at our disposal for various projects. Would it help? Oh, and stormwater. Yes, thank you. Five. Would it help to have more on board? It could, um, especially as we're looking at all these new opera projects coming. Um, I think for now we're managing it, but if we needed more, I certainly send the signal up and... Uh, Talk to the city manager about possibly moving forward with that. Any thoughts on it, that, Mark? It's not going to be harmful to have these engineering reports done sooner than later, correct? Correct. And right now, if we had done that <laughs> in the past, we wouldn't be at the 60% point, correct? I don't know if that's true or not. Okay, because I'm just curious, um, what would be holding this particular project up? Nothing at this point. Yeah. We're, we're going full speed on this one. In fact, but I, how long are they working on this engineering project? Um, I think we authorized it last fall, so a few months. Re remember, it's been badminton between roundabouts and elevating, oh, and and I'm well aware of the roundabouts. You know, a whole bunch of other stuff. So it wasn't settled. The dust didn't settle until, I, I guess, the fall or something <coughs> that we decided to go ahead and we better get it done before the bridge got done. So everybody. Sure. came on board then and and um you know you could um anyway i that's the explanation for that okay i i just would like to have be firing on all cylinders because if we have that um you know we we have a shortfall right now in getting people to do the work so we should have the engineering reports done we should have the plans done we should have all of our ducks in a row so that um, getting the person to actually do the work should be our weakest link. And then, of course, them finishing the project. Mm -hmm. So if that's all I'm saying is if, if you need, I, I can't authorize that myself, you know that. Sure. Yeah, I but I would be interested in, in looking into getting more engineers involved, if that can help the situation. Mm -hmm something to consider thank you and that's good input that that's the kind of input that's important for us to hear in tonight's meeting well I don't know that that's a policy issue as much as if this man tells this man that's what's needed we've got that level of service right. contract already in place and there's a, an expenditure or ceiling on that once we get past then it would come back to us so the city manager could Put as many people on it as Mr. Robertson sees fit. Cardno already says that they could subcontract for more services if they want. That's within their current contract. So, mm -hmm. yes, that's. I think I think City Manager, of course, is listening. That's something to you we right would definitely now. look at and do. And obviously, if we decided to do that, we would bring back and let you know what we were doing. So. The point is I'm hearing it, we'll look at it, and uh, we'll let you know if we think that's the best option. If that is the option that is slowing us up and getting someone else on board to assist, then that will be letting you know that uh, 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 that's the route we plan to go. 
Yeah. Did you sure. have anything else? Well, I, I just was bringing it up because when I looked through the high interest, you know, priority list that we have here and projects, there were quite a few of them that needed um, to be 100% ready to go, and they weren't. So that's why I brought that up. I, yeah. I don't think there's any disagreement with that, and, and um, I, I think that um, I, I don't have, uh, you know, obviously I don't have anything to offer you on that, but um, I agree with you. So. I think one thing will help to that point is when I do finally get my grant project specialist on board, that person's going to be able to help me manage projects. That That is one of the difficulties I'm facing is with 43 projects, sometimes it's harder to keep them all moving at the same speed. So another person on board, which I'm grateful the board let me have, uh, is going to help us move things along. And, and maybe that would be the opportunity to consider whether we get additional engineering contracts. Just to, just to, to remind you, that was one position I asked respectfully for you to let me hire early before the budget took place, October 1. Mm -hmm. um, it is January 31st, and we still don't have the right person. We probably had a person, we had the right person, and before we could even get them in the process and somebody swooped in for more money and he didn't even, the one chosen didn't even get to the table of doing it, the second person would have been great for the position that he asked in the budget that we said was probably coming next year in the budget, he would have been perfect for that project. Limited grant, um, so yeah. he may be good in a year if we get in October that new position, but he wasn't good for, for this one. Um, so we tried to hire it early, and you gave us the permission to start looking in, in August and get going early. Unfortunately, that market out there, it was oh, a lot yeah. of these jobs like that, that every city and every mayor and commissioner and city manager will tell you um, the getting the right person. And this is a job, we can't, we can't select somebody who, ah, he's okay, maybe pass, we can train him. This is not one of those jobs where we can bring in and train him on a job. This person has to be, you see the list, this person has to be ready to come in and, and move. And uh, so. Well, this yep. is a doggy dog hiring process, obviously. Yes. yes. Um, is there any chance, and I know, I don't believe the city's done this before, can we look at, you know, going through our HR roster, we've got a lot of vacancies, but some are more important than others, at having selective signing bonuses to get these people on board so we don't get them robbed? I mean, by other, you know, we, we're not the highest paying municipality in Florida, that's for sure, or in the Southeast, and these people are mobile. If we need people and we, don't need to get to that 13th hour thing where it's like, oh, sorry, Joe, I changed my mind. You know, maybe we should consider selective hiring bonuses just to, okay. just to kind of grease the process along. Just the biggest problem in that is these, like we talked about a year or two ago with inspector stuff, they're not just coming in and offering people 5,000 to go in the, they're coming in in the 20s or 30s that bonuses or putting them up to the top of the grade. Um, <laughs> You're getting beat, you're not even getting close beat out, you're getting beat out by a lot of money. So all those incentives to offer. Um, um, I understand that, but I mean, all things considered, if we keep slowing down and congesting ourselves on these projects, mm -hmm. it's time is money, it's costing us, it's costing us both time and money, and the list of projects doesn't seem to be getting any shorter. No kidding. So I, I don't know, maybe yeah. we should have a, a more <laughs> fleshed out discussion on this, but we're I've been in this situation before in private industry and that's what we had to do. We're talking about somebody to help Mr. Robertson, is that right? I'm talking about any position that we have within our, that's affecting projects getting done that are key that are slowing us down because we're lacking the personnel. I mean. Couldn't we, couldn't we If it's that? a project manager, it's a project manager. If it's an engineer, it's an, en you know, it, it shouldn't make a difference, but they should be, somebody should be saying, we really, really need this person. And, you know, use a selective, uh, I don't know, hiring incentive for that. 
Which well, is you got to remember, I've got the option and ability to hire anywhere in the range. I can hire them at top of the range. They can come in here and get top pay, top out of the range, which is what we use sometimes. Sometimes you see people hired 80% into the range because we have to offer that much money or we're going to lose them. Um, so these other methods you talk about are good, but again, we're not getting beat out by a 5% or a simple thing. We're, we're getting beat out by big chunks of money from private industry and other places. We're not getting beat out even by other cities because they're scrambling. We're getting beat, you know, we're getting beat out by, by twenty and $30,000 private corporations, and you don't have enough incentives or hiring at the top of the range and stuff to, to lure those people. Um, believe me, if it comes to the point and there's anything I need of incentives to bring somebody on board, I'll be the first one to come to this board and say, listen, I, 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 need, I need something that we haven't done before um, to try to get this person on board because of the importance. So. Okay, yeah, I just want to make, you know, no. just wanted to make a point that it's... And I'm glad to hear you're receptive in case I need to... It's not important, that's what we need to do. I mean, one way or the other. I'm sorry. Talk to yeah, no, I was just going to say, and I'm going to say this probably throughout the evening, we're in unorthodox times, and this is not the norm. Um, but while it is the norm, there are other things that we may have to do, even if it's on a temporary basis. Um, you know, yeah. What, yeah. what Vice Mayor is bringing up right now doesn't have to be the end all, but right now, if we leave, you know, half million dollar, million dollar projects sitting on the table and not getting done at how many of those are acceptable to we have to say uncle to twenty thousand uh, dollar increase so that's what it, it right. kind of comes down to um, it's not a game we like playing you like playing but it has to be done it you know otherwise these will just continue to grow so yeah that's what i wanted do you, to share. Do you have a solution for that I suspect you do. No, I, I got no solution. I just know, you know, these capital improvement projects were going to inconvenience the residents. This is one of the bigger ones. And uh, I just want to touch up with Bob. Uh, talked about another 40% of the design being needed. W what are some other aspects in that 40% to complete the design? So, um, you know, it, 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 the percentage of completion of a design is a judgment call. And mm -hmm. it's based on my experience. It's based on uh, professional engineering experience. but. Typically, um, when you hit to that point, um, you're putting the finishing touches on your details. You know, you start with the plan, you're laying out a plan, and um, if there's still room for changes like there is now, which I've been doing with our engineer, um, you can make those changes without um, impacting the final design elements, the little details that, mm -hmm. that have to get drawn up. So you don't do those until you get the, the, the plan view all set. Um, the uh, that's really the gist of it. Um, most of the work is done by the time you get to a 60% point. It's just filling in the details and, and making the minor changes. Thank you, sir. And then, yeah, it's, you know, just, um, I'm just looking forward to when that project's done and yeah, me uh, too. having that flood issue uh, mitigated and, and not there. That's going to be a great thing for the residents. So just looking forward to it. Okay. Um, go ahead. Um, th this person that you're looking for is you, what do you what did you call them again job title is grant project specialist so they and you need uh, you need assistance personally right to help right. manage these projects right right and then there's some technical part to it right right so this okay. is a person that is has experience writing grants but can also manage projects okay. and which is the more difficult part <laughs> Which is the more yes. tech, which is the most tech <laughs> which is the more technical part? The technical part is the grant writing. Okay. Yeah. So could we elevate some talent that we have already in city staff that could come up and help you with your project management and then we can contract out uh, grant writing? That's an idea. Um, I also had the idea of, of, of hiring using our, one of our contracting engineers to help me with the project management side as well. Okay. So either bringing someone in uh, from within or as you say, uh, from within or as I say, <laughs> yeah. using one of our consultants. Well, yes. you could do both. Yeah, yeah. You could be, we could be creative here, elevate somebody that yeah. can stand with you and get these projects moved mm -hmm. and then um, get a grant writer that we could contract out. And, and I, I'm sure there's firms that, that do grant writing as, as a firm. 
Certainly. So. But I'm looking for, it's hard though to hire a consultant to do grant writing because what I need is someone who's gonna follow that grant all the way through right. and manage the project all the way through. And there's no guarantee I'm gonna get that. Of course there isn't if I hire someone, but right. um, you know, my point is that uh, what I'm thinking is that if we can't hire someone in this next round, then I might go to that, that route where okay. we uh, talk to the city manager about using uh, one of our contract firms to help me with at least the project management side. Um, to at least alleviate that, because what I'm concerned about is all these ARPA projects. Um, they've got deadlines, and that means we're going to get started on those designs in the next, uh, you know, six, eight, twelve months to meet the the the, uh, the deadline for using the grants. So I appreciate your input. Thank you. Thank you. And, and remember, we may come, but we're trying to we're trying to adhere what not this this commission, last commission, um, the emphasis on grant. If you if you remember and watched the meetings before, I had a little bit of a disagreement of the need for grant because if you look at our grant list and what we've done, we've done a pretty doggone good job of getting grants. In fact, we're almost the one I'd say now we've got more grants than we can manage now, and that's with us doing it ourselves. But the emphasis came from the public and to this bo previous boards and stuff about this grant right, the importance of this grant writing position. I, no matter what evidence I produced of grants we had got and grants that exceeds our capabilities, <laughs> once that wasn't listened to, but I was listened to politely and, and that emphasis came on it. Well, you're right, after this second round, my job as city manager is to possibly come back to you and say the expectations of what portion of that grant writing and what's project for this position that this board wanted, we may have to adjust it a little. I would ask you to adjust that a little and. Uh, uh, because the people maybe have a little bit of capability to work and learn on grants, but it's got the project side. So that is in my mind in our discussions where I may need to go back and the expectations when, when this position was put in the budget, um, we may just tell you we're going to fill it, but we want you to know um, there's just been some changes in, in what the marketplace and what our priorities are. And that, that would be me, my job of bringing back to you and working with you to get an understanding this position needs to be slightly adjusted um, for just the same things that you have said. So well, that, that will be the next step. It just We're, might be the case that a grant writer and a project manager, you're gonna have a too hard of a search to find somebody that fits into that, into that sphere. No, if that's the case, I mean, let's get it out. Let's get out in front of it and say, what do we need more? Yes, exactly. You know, I mean, yeah, we want to be responsive to the the previous commissions and the public's responses to, to have a grant writer, but we also need to prioritize it. <laughs> it doesn't. If we're up to our eyeballs and alligators, I, it's hard to remember your initial objective I, was to drain the swamp, right? I, I, I think we're kind of getting mired down the minutia here. Let, if you don't mind, let me hear what Commissioner Iser says, then I've got This was just a quick, say. what is in your time frame when you said that this is the next go around? What, what are you referring to, a week, two weeks, a month? Uh, probably about a month. What I've done is we, we um, uh, re-advertised the position and uh, it's a nationwide search we're doing. So uh, we're, we're looking at the resumes that come in, sorting them, scoring them, and trying to pick the best of the best. Um, I've got three or four good ones now. Um, I'm hoping to get a few more, then we'll ask for resumes and do um, interviews within the next maybe month or so, I guess it's probably reasonable. See, just seeing a month out and then going through the whole procedure, I in my head, I'm, I'm looking at four to six months till you get somebody even on. It, that could be right. Um, when I say, you know, you're asking when I could make a decision yeah, on which yeah. route we're going to go. Uh, if, if we get these candidates, we interview them, and um, we don't find one that's going to meet the, the criteria, we'll either come to you and, and mark a, but and make a, make if, a decision. But realistically, if we and, hadn't got the guy who accepted the job swoop from us, he would have been perfect. He'd have yeah. probably been on board in three or four weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully that person is there you know, they'll be on board and through the pro believe me, we'll accelerate the process to get them on board. So I think for yeah. the time you give them the offer and stuff, I, I'm hoping it's a month out at most. I, um, let me just say a couple of things. I wanna ask a question on the, on the project as well. Um, you know, this is a puzzle for the city manager to work out. This isn't something that he hasn't gone through before. We did it through the planning department 
You can hire temps, you can hire through our consulting engineering firm, take one of their guys that's an admin person, put them in our department, let them work with us on day to day to get, I mean, there's a variety of ways to do this rather than getting down to bonuses and changing hiring policies and the whole thing. Right now, we just need to kind of solve the problem right now for the next several months. Let the city manager come back with something at budget time as far as any reshuffling of priorities and stuff like that. Um, that's how I see it. So he does have the means through that contract to get Mr. Robertson the help that he needs, but that's for those two to work out. You know, for us, it's get the project done, right? <laughs> I'm all in. <laughs> um, the only the one concern I have is the, 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 I remember somewhere along the line, we talked about a flapper valve for that project yes. and the long lead time for that. Yes. Um, just be mindful of that. I don't know if you can go ahead and order whatever you think we're going to need ahead of time, deduct that from the contract or whatever we will provide or whatever it takes, but just be mindful of that so we don't wind up into something like we did with um, Seabreeze that we've got everything on board, but we don't have the materials to actually do the job, so. We'll be mindful of okay. that. Yes, thank you. Um, did you have anything else? No comment. Okay. And then I, I do agree with going out to bid early on that thing. Uh, that's, that's another issue. We may wind up going out to bid twice. So, uh -huh. okay. Um, is there any other comment on that one? Next one. Next. Okay, um, hit on a couple. Some good news, quick ones. Uh, Tarpon Avenue project is making good progress. You've seen the medians being formed and poured out there. Mm -hmm. um, we're actually looking at making some uh, improvements in, in addition to what's in part of the project. A good example is that um, if, you know, if you can visualize the northwest corner of that intersection where the stoplight is um, on the Walmart side, um, people crossing, especially in wheelchairs and bikes, have no way to get into Walmart without going into oncoming traffic or going all the way down to the uh, Huey side. So we were putting in, excuse me, putting in a, um, a sidewalk that wasn't part of that. We talked to Walmart. We already have an easement there. Um, just a little value added type things that we're doing. I'm real excited about that project and I can't wait for it to get finished up. And a great contractor. We got a good contractor on that he, one. He yes. did Live Oak Street, by the way. That's right. And he did a terrific job on that, so anyway. Uh, was there anything else on no, that one? No, just Any wanted to highlight on that one for you. Anybody? I have one slight comment, and it, it could be I'm totally out of my mind. I thought I drove by the other day, I'm serious, the other day, and on the, what would be the northeast side of the Huey Tarpon Crossroads, there's like a divider between the Walmart lane, I guess, and the other lane, and it looks like on that divider, there is a wheelchair ramp, but it goes to nowhere. It just goes to that island. It's a landing or refuge island to cross. Okay, so cross, there's a reason yeah. for it. Yes. I just drove up by it and I went, this is going nowhere. Why is that? Yeah. Okay, sorry, that's my only comment. Oh, that's good. Otherwise, that's it's good. proceeding great. That's it's you nice you notice those questions. <laughs> do you, do you, did you have anything? No, no. No, it's, it's nice to see that project coming along. The residents have really asked for it and that yeah. you know, intersection with the safety going in and out of the Walmart plaza is a big deal so thank you next project that's enough good news let's get to the okay. sponge docks <laughs> flood abatement project <laughs> we gave we gave them some pieces of good news now yeah, let's, I got it. I now got let's it. jump back and uh some things they've given the city manager more gray hairs okay so you want to talk about the sponge docks yeah. um yes so they the the vault sponge docks vault pump station project is in design and we got to a 60 percent design and the engineer gave me a cost estimate for construction that was very high. Um, it was enough for me to say, okay, stop, pump the brakes. I need to make sure that this is legitimate. Um, the engineer claims it was, and so I decided I don't think so. I asked another engineer to do a third party review of that cost estimate that is ongoing now. They have a um, construction arm with that firm. Uh, I don't have the results on that yet. But um, it, was, it was very concerning to me, especially since we have this grant money. I wanted to make sure it was real. And if it is, then, uh, then I'm going to have to work through a conversation with the city manager, with, with the board again, and come up with some options for how to proceed with that project. Um, 
Mr. Robertson, go over that project, just a little describe it, because sure. most of the commission wasn't on the commission at the time yeah. that was approved. Okay, so it essentially uh, addresses the flooding of the sponge docks, particularly during um, heavy rainfall and in the king tide, the high tide, super high tide events. Um, it does two things. It enlarges the stormwater drain pipes that feed down into the sponge docks area, and it installs a large pump station uh, vaulted pump station um, at, at the docks with check valves so that the flooding on the street can be prevented. Pump it out into the river. Let, let me interrupt you. Please. When you say sponge docks area, be more specific. So okay. we're not thinking that if, if you're implying that that's going to cure the sponge docks flooding, that's what you're saying. Fair I don't enough. know that that's what you're saying. I'm talking about Dota Canise between okay. our Ferris be, and Hope. Be a little more right. specific about yeah. that. Yeah, there you go. Dota Kinney's between our Ferris and Hope. Did you Thank get you that? for clarifying the, the, that. The flooding Dota between, between North Ferris and between the Athens Street area. At, the Dota Kinney's and Athens Street, where all that gets flooded, huh? and then it extends from there up Dota Kinney's towards our Ferris, towards Alternate 19, and then to the west towards um, Hope? Hope Street, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Yeah. So that area is what Mr. Robertson's talking about. Doesn't address. I would say, in fairness, Hope Street intersection? Correct. And Hope then Street also down at Roosevelt, which was the issue with the, the hotel, if you remember. Yeah, yeah. So go ahead and continue. But we yep. have another That's system going it. in at the end of Roosevelt, right? Pardon me? So we have something else going in at the end of Roosevelt? No, that's what we need that, to talk about. The, yeah. That's what I wanted to get to. Okay. How, how many volts are you referring to? One. You're only discussing one volt and that's cost overrun already? It's a large pump station. Why don't you give us the numbers, yeah. Bob? Yeah, Mr. Okay. Roberts, I don't think he wants to. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, we, we have the, um, the original thought was that it was gonna be around two and a half million. We have $1.7 million in grant money from the state. Uh, the numbers that the, the uh, first engineer were giving me were over five million, somewhere between five and seven million. And that's enough for me to say, okay, now we, we need to make sure that these are legitimate. Um, and if there's something I can do to change in the design that without losing functionality, I'm looking at ways to do that. Uh, there's a lot of ways to approach this, but uh, I'm signaling to you that we have an issue and that I'm working on it. I'm gonna have some alternatives hopefully for you soon. And let me say in my city manager language that's not that doesn't know the lingo, Bob Robertson, the mayor can tell you. Let me tell you my concern with this thing from the very start before all of you are on board here. Let me tell you my concern. There was a perception when this thing first came out in this miraculous Save the Docks project that, and I think there was a picture out there of people walking and up their knees flooding and this was the, this was the uh, solving of the, of the flooding at the sponge docks. And, and I immediately said, it is not, it is a beginning, but you have all the way down to Roosevelt, you have areas, you have additional areas that you go, this will help, but this is not the cure-all. There's, there's phase two, phase three, and maybe phase four of this thing that has to be done to make an effort. It's been perceived too much from the start as this is the, this is the solving of the sponge docks flooding at the docks and it's not, which is why at 1.7 or 2.5 million, okay, but if you're gonna spend four or five million and then, you know, it's not the solution and when the happening happens, that's not solution, you know what everybody's gonna look up here and say, what the heck's wrong? And, and I've been trying to get that perception out from the very beginning. There are other phases that need to be done. You need to go down that street to Hope and Roosevelt and do, there's more things, there are more, we had talked about we had talked about in the middle of this design to maybe add some of these things into what we're doing, but you see we're already in the five millions and we haven't even added because the, 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 the best thing in my mind to do was add or at least have, the, have it ready to expand and fix the other problems along the way in steps. But um, so I just want this board to realize and everybody watching, um, this is not the cure-all for the flooding at the dock. Maybe a little technical, Bob, just talk about, you know, the steps that would be after this project, uh, uh, you know, going down the docks and address the other areas more of Hope, Roosevelt, and the other areas. Yeah, and, that'll, and just like you said, that'll be in the next phase. We'll, we'll have to do the analysis and, and look at, um, you know, additional pumping if, if, if that becomes the answer or, um, you know, uh, check valves in the right places, 
Um, there's all different kinds of things that we can do, but yeah, you're right. I mean, <laughs> this has been a focus for so long that I haven't really paid much attention to the rest of the, pro the area yet. Not yet. Just out, of, just out of curiosity, what's the size of this vault? Uh, it's about 20 feet by 10 and about 12 feet deep. And these are big pumps. These and are not small sump pumps. What's intended to put where? Where were you going to locate these? Uh, um, under the sidewalk at the intersection of Athens and Dodecanese. Okay. Yeah, and you're right, by the way. It was, from a public's point of view, when I wasn't on the council and stuff like that, it kind of sounded like this was going to be the panacea for flooding in the sponge dock. So I was envisioning this tremendously huge 50 by 100 foot vault because that's about what it would take to do the whole thing. But glad to hear it wasn't that big. Wondered where you were going to go. big to me. <laughs> yeah, I have like two questions. Um, one, how many vaults do you think is needed to solve the problem? How many vaults? Um, I don't have enough information to answer that. I don't well, really know yet. Just ballpark it. Let's five? say, let's Do you say, think it's five? No, it, it strategically placed, maybe three. Three. So you have to figure on a worst case scenario of $15 million. I don't think the flooding in the other areas are as, as significant as this one. This is 12 why million. It's, it's going to be a larger one, but certainly will be a lot of money. No question about that. In this area, has anybody done just a guesstimate? on raising that area, raising even the storefronts, raising the street so that there is no flooding. I'm not saying to do it. I'm just asking if there's been a comparison done. I don't know if that analysis has been done. That might be part of something we look at. Uh, it maybe as part of our vulnerability assessment. Um, I mean, I hate looking at it after now, we have 60% through a project that we've been paying to have designed when it may not it's evidently, from what I'm hearing, is it's it's not going to work unless we have all of these ducks in a row, all of the vaults, and yet, you know, even one of the vault is something that's out of our realm to, to uh, pay for. I, I'm hesitant to agree that it's not going to work. I, I think it will work for, help. for this area. But it's not the solving of the problem. I know yeah. the difference between help and hurt. Yeah. Um, and this is just for king tides. It's got I know, nothing to do I with know. hurricanes or anything. Hurricane, you have no shot at doing anything. I know. I understand. Um, is it is it feasible to get a ballpark estimate what it would be like to raise? Sure, it is feasible to do that. I, I mean, I'm just trying to think of um, alternate means of uh, of trying to because you know I know we've had hurricanes in other places and that's what they do on the build back. Um, you know, they raise the property. Um, mm -hmm. It's not a fun job, I know that as well. But which I don't, which I, property are you talking about, the stores? Could be everything, yeah. That's, oh I don't yeah, think that's, the, the current BFA wouldn't uphold raising the street, so you're talking about raising the actual buildings? Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to get a ballpark figure. I'm not saying, this is, this is really, I'm just being a little bit far-fetched on here. Because, I mean, otherwise you're talking about comparing this to, um, you know, 15, 12 to $15 million, and as you just said, um, it's not going to solve the problem, it's just going to help. So we would need something that's, if you're going to go into that kind of money, that would solve the problem, not just help. So, I mean, Understood. that's, you know... It's a good point to take, but we've got 1.7 million we need to solve this issue with, and then uh, <laughs> we well, need because we've got that money sitting there. We've got you know that we're not going to be able to hold forever, so uh, we're kind of committed. We're to a point where we're committed, and we need to complete this help the most efficient and best way we can. Um, so, yes, it's, well, it's a I'm dilemma. I've, got, I've lost sleep over this project a lot in the last couple, of three, four years. Um, <laughs> I'm happy to listen to any other, you know, suggestions, but there's, there's one of two things. Either you have to afford what we're going to put in, which will help, or we have to try to see about solving the problem or just leave it alone. I mean, one of, the, one of those three things you got to deal with. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Is it possible that, I mean, we're talking about 
maybe three vaults right on the on the the transect between Athens and Roosevelt. Is it there's kind of spot puddling all the way down there. Some it's heavier towards uh, Athens Street, etc. But could we look at maybe smaller vaults that are placed maybe seven of them instead of three? That could be so that if there's heavier flooding at the I don't know the east end or whatever, it, we could pump down to the other ones maybe and kind of even it out. As far you know, would that be better than trying to put three large ones in there, or more cost effective? Or I think those will all be answered when we look at the design of it, or just guesstimate. We don't know what that design, so that's kind of down the project of yeah. of where we move. Again, we're trying to deal with this. Um, so, um, do you have anything else, Commissioner Krieger? I just wondered if the board could clarify or staff. Did, did we talk about this project several months ago, in, in which the, it was the the price per intersection was getting over about three million dollars, and we were considering maybe uh, doing bonds to help fix the issue? No, this was on this one. Yeah, okay. Overall no. bonds, yeah. Okay. For everything. Um, you know, I don't know how to handle it, but I, it, you know, if it comes to a point where we can either, you know, not fix it or just address one intersection at a time and see how that goes. But uh, when I was walking through City Hall, I noticed that I saw the, the project map on the floor. Uh, and that was a pump station right there at the intersection of uh, Athens and the Vicanis. How big is that pump station? It looked pretty big yeah that's the one I was telling you the vice mayor about it's the 20 footer by 12 or so and that's up in the air you no, know on, no, on no. concrete in the okay ground. In was the there ground. a pump station or anything above ground no. over there okay no. maybe it might have been a different project that I was looking at so okay thank you sure sure so th this uh, the one pump station on Dodecanes in Athens what will that, and you guys have already probably already discussed this, but I'm sorry I wasn't involved. It, obviously it's not, quote, solving the problem of flooding, that there will never be flooding, but it's going to mitigate some of the flooding in less uh, um, onerous, you know, weather, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and that's what? Three, three, four million, or and now you said you have a five million dollar uh, thing. Okay, I mean I, I, it's it's entertaining to hear, but um, you better be ready to take every every dime that you got on this budget and multiply it times like five to raise every building on <laughs> on the sponge docks <laughs> and the roads. And they're, remember, they're all private property, and so it's it's I mean it's entertaining, but. Um, anyways, we're mitigating. A daunting we're thing mitigating, for sure. yes. uh, and and we are in a uh, in a very vulnerable spot um, with you know rising uh, sea levels, and it's just going to be uh, trying to push the waves back for as long as we can. So the the idea into the community that we're solving a problem that probably isn't solvable long term. Bob, why don't you, from a not political, but from a practicality, what is this project from a practicality, what, what was this pro project intended to do and help with? Why don't you spell that out so everybody knows that straight out? Yeah, it's intended to first address the sunny day flooding. Um, so that, uh, I don't need to explain what that is any further. It's basically high tides, whether whether it's not there's rain or something, um, and my computer just shut down. But the other thing is it's, uh, um, it's, it's to help, just, just as the Commissioner-elect said, to help mitigate the flooding that happens um, during the high st storm events. So we won't have to put up the high water signs. The, the street's gonna get drained quickly. Um, and the, the sponge docks and the Dodecanese area can remain functional. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really what it's all about. Yeah, it's the um, combination of the rain and the tides um, that causes the worst problem that we have right now. Um, as far as raising buildings, I, I would suspect there's going to be one getting permission to do that. 
And number two, there's probably regulatory obstacles with um, the FEMA programs that would prevent that and probably introduce some other things. Um, as far as the, uh, um, the early on, Athens, Dodecanes, uh, Hope, Roosevelt, Canal Street, originally it was MLK, but that seems to have been able to get solved. But there's about, I would say, half a dozen of these locations just like that that would need a vault. These things are not anything new. You can find them down in Pinellas Park, St. Petersburg, South Clearwater, where they use this approach to deal with basically a local basin where the water accumulates. For example, the gentleman that's got the, his home out there on Peninsula, we can't solve it because it, it, there is no way for that water. There's places like that down South County that this is where they use these. Of course, they're a little smaller um, scale. What I'm very much concerned about, um, it, it's gonna be not just, one, there's no guarantee that it's gonna solve the problem in my opinion. Um, number two, and, and we should probably, from a policy board, learn more about this as well. Maybe from Public Works down South County that maybe the county and stuff like that see some of the problems that they have to deal with and, and some of the issues that still remain after that. Um, the other part of that is the actual uh, construction in probably the most visible intersection down there right and I don't know what the timetable would be for construction down there but it would be a complete uh, delivery trucks tourist well, you, you name it you this would create an obstacle for all of that so but that's a very painful thing that no matter what we do <laughs> we would have to go through that um, there may be a, a now we've done this vault at that location. There may be somewhere, originally I didn't think we were actually gonna do the vault in the intersection. I thought we were gonna put a vault off to some piece of property to the side. We and, tried. And yes, but that wasn't successful. Pardon me? <laughs> we couldn't successfully negotiate that. Right, well, I mean, true. But, um, you know, for example, the, the 20 by 40 could go into the sponge dock itself up between uh, Hope and Athens and then maybe connect those two intersections so at least we, we, we resolve both intersections. What I'm saying is we really have kind of taken a very singular linear approach to this and focused on the intersection of Athens and Dota I, From a policy perspective, I think it's smart that you stop the design work on this for right now until we kind of collect our thoughts on it. And I think we need, we're not gonna solve it here tonight. I think everybody's comments are good. I think that there's some genuine concerns. The very first thing you're gonna hear is, is people wanted the problem solved, but they're also gonna be extremely critical of, of what happens down there, especially if it really doesn't. Exactly what was it supposed to solve because I, my store is still getting flooded sort of thing. So I think we need to kind of just um, we need to get the money, uh, the 1.7 spent, I understand that, and, um, but I still think we need to have a little bit more thinking out of the box on this thing, and, and I really, uh, I, you know, for me, and I'm sure the city manager, uh, Commissioner-elect Kulianis, when he takes office, we really need to do some discussion on this with people out in the community, and maybe they've got some ideas as well, and because, and, um, like I said, it's not just one, it's gonna be at least three for the sponge docks and probably about a half a dozen, uh, three more around town to solve those intersections. So, Mayor, anyway. can I ask one question about this? Yeah, of course. Can the city negotiate a, a deal with installing a vault on someone's private property? I don't... To to install vaults on someone's private property by the sponge docks? I think that's what you were talking about, right? Is it, yeah. yeah, he... And I mean, to me, if, if there was a solution, we've got, for example, down there by the, um, I'm not saying where the sponge diver statue is, but down there, it, it, this 
it doesn't have to be the exact 20 feet by whatever it was, right, Bob? Right, and no. You're conforming that to what you've got available. Depends on what flow you're trying right. to move. So yeah. the actual shape could be different. We've got um, some room down there between the edge of the road and the seawall sure. that we would probably have to do some seawall work as mm -hmm. well. But that may may be an idea, and that way there may be an opportunity an opportunity to tie in, uh, as I said, maybe Athens and and uh, Hope Street. Together, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm just, you know, saying that maybe that's a thought that we should look at as well. Um, 25 years, I, I think I was city manager. We replaced the, uh, the they weren't, they were not stormwater. They were sewer lines down there at the sponge docks when we did that, uh, when we redid Duo de Canis down there. Remember we yeah. put all the, we, they were clay pipes, clay sewer pipes down there. We replaced them with PVC 25 years ago. So that whole street had been torn up, but then we were able to, and the road that you see right now is pretty nice, right? That's because we went in there and completely redid it, put a new base in and everything. People understood that. Um, I think they're less patient these days <laughs> than they were back then. So um, all I'm saying is for me, from a policy perspective tonight, we need to do some more thinking on this. Sure. Uh, go ahead, Commissioner Eisen. Uh Commissioner, what you're referring to um, is a French drain, and it is put into many people's homes. They do a perimeter. Um, they chop up the perimeter, and in one location, they put a low point yes, with a pump, and as the water level rises, um, it gets pumped out and you just have to have a pump that's capable of, of just keeping the water below that, uh, that flood line. So that's similar to what you're trying to accomplish with this, just mm -hmm. using larger pumps, um, you know, and hoping that it can keep up with the amount of water that's yeah. coming in. So okay. Just so you'll know, we had a local basin at the intersection of Pinellas and Safford. That's right. That's got a huge grate in the middle of that intersection. That line goes all the way from that intersection all the way down to the river. Mm -hmm. And and that was a huge, I, I don't know what the diameter, 36 or 48 inch uh, storm sewer that's in there that accommodates all the intersections. So um, that, we did it that way. That's not gonna work here, I don't believe. So, because uh, that but, was a higher location. But here we also have an issue with the drain uh, where the water is coming in. We have big drains there that... The, the that flapper are, valves. Right. Yeah, they, I mean, if y'all, uh, you've got something to be able to show individual commissioners, right? Sure. To sit yeah. down with them, and that probably would be yeah, the that, best idea to see what where the, where the vault's going to go, what is being planned, and then you can deal with it that way. I don't think we're going to get yeah. that tonight. And I wasn't. I, I, I wasn't suggesting we raise all of uh, dodecanese. No, I know you're that looking at uh, comparison. Okay. Um, I'm looking at. Did 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 you want to say something else or? What? So we're not. He can still pursue the second uh, bid, right? The second uh, uh, appraisal with the engineers, right? That's what I'm hearing. It's still okay. working on yeah. waiting. Yeah, for he that. can still oh. look for that second, right? Yeah, I, I would ask that you just give me the time to sort through, through that. I'll put together a, a, a basic um, overview, comprehensive memo, uh, as the city manager suggests, and just kind of give you some uh, some images and, and show you what the whole project's all about so you get a better comprehensive understanding of it, and, and give, I'll give you some alternatives. So just give me the time, and I'll, I'll take care of that. And uh, I think the you. word the city manager was looking for is, I'm not putting words in your mouth, is that the project was oversold as far as what it's supposed to be addressing. When we talk about sponge docks area, it's really isolated just that one intersection and if the flooding gets f bad enough, it just migrates, that's all, not anywhere else. So, I, and my point to you is it's a good idea to stop the design until you get the rest of your stuff out. Tonight's just a status to give you an idea of where we are. You weigh in on it with your thoughts. If it scares you, good, because that's what good. it's supposed to be tonight, because <laughs> I'm worried about it. And I think it's good for Commissioner-elect Koulianis, too. So I don't have anything else. Does anybody else have anything else? This one, go ahead. Okay. What? Just a couple more quick project just, updates. Um, and we'll leave it to the board if they have any of the projects yeah. that they want. We'll leave it. So I'll uh, just touch on the Anclo Dredge project. I've, I've been keeping you all updated on, on that with uh, separate emails. 
Um, what they're, the contractor is still, still saying that they're going to start dredging first week of February. Um, I, I feel I like wait. that might get pushed a little bit, but. I think we have to push. <laughs> I looked at it it's, yesterday. It's around not. the corner, so. It's tomorrow. When I get the, I get the updates every Thursday on the schedule, so if I, if I, when I hear something new, I'll send you all that new information. Um, but the, the point is they are making progress, and it, it is just around the corner, so I'm excited about that. Okay. Talk about, uh, obviously, the another main concern with this and uh, the residents and the board is the outer cuts and explain right. we've got someone coming to talk to them and talk yep. a little bit about the outer cut. Outer cuts are still a concern of a lot of people, so. Yeah, so the uh, the dredging of the outer cuts, this is the, uh, the, the cuts of the channel that are furthest west. Um, the Army Corps are proposing to do that in-house with their own equipment, but they're, they're, they're not uh, immune from permitting. They've got to go through all the processes as, as if they were hiring a contractor to do it. So that takes a long time for them to do. Um, but they are working on that. They're going to come and give you, the project manager is going to come here. He'll be in person on the 28th of February to give you an update on that project and uh, give you the opportunity to ask questions. He's also the project manager on the current dredge work, so you can ask him about that as well. And we're going through another another vast sphere scope to to look at the the inner cuts as well because I know we did that a while ago and it looked like they were getting pretty clogged up in some respects. Yep, um, we do have that. It's we did we're supposed to do it. I think by charter, mayor helped me out. I think it was every three years we're required yes. to do that by the city charter, um, and we did it I think two years ago. So I'll, I'll need to put it in the budget for next year. The dredging or the he's talking about the dredge scope. I'm sorry, I thought you were talking about the the bathymetric canals. surveys is what you're talking about. I am, yes. Yeah. I, I misunderstood your question, Vice Mayor. I apologize. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, within the charter, where it says we must maintain those waterways. I mean, doing a scope survey every three years is fine, but we're not maintaining them. The last scope survey pointed out a whole bunch of red areas. Yeah. Um, that we need to address. I mean, it's in our charter, and and I, you know, I made note of this well before I was ever on the commission, because I live on one of those cuts or just off one of those cuts. It's getting pretty skinny out there, and you're going to get a lot of upset residents if this isn't attended to. Sometime, it, maybe it's not in our budget for this year, but we really do need to attend to it. But a uh, doing a scope every three years doesn't help unless we do something with that information. Right. The, 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 there's a fundamental requirement that has to be satisfied in the charter, but what you're saying is correct as well. The use of that information is to maintain the waterways. And we really, honestly, I, I don't know what those areas are that, I'm sure they exist. I guess what I'm saying is I haven't really paid attention to any specific locations. The one area that I, a couple of areas that I was a little uh, wondering about was, which we didn't do, was the uh, cuts between the disposal uh, islands the, the, uh, that go out there where people come from along, I think it's um, Riverside in that area that cut through the, uh, the uh, disposal, the islands that are there uh, that we, they used to be open, they're not now. So yeah, all of those are pretty yeah, but, much silting up. But right. And, and that's something that needs to be, we probably should, I mean, we could do it here. I honestly don't think, one of the biggest issues of the city staff, and I'm not saying this in any negative way, is lack of familiarity with our waterways around town, our local waterways, and not understanding which ones are the most important or not. And, and um, 25 years ago, we did the, uh, uh, dredging of these local areas, but there were a whole lot of people involved in that, local people. We haven't really done that. We've got a maritime, I don't even know, commerce committee that could certainly function in that and kind of help us identify where these areas are that need to be dredged. That's local knowledge, I guess, is what I'm getting at. Like yourself, for example. That, I agree. I mean, I have lots yeah. of local knowledge. The maritime group, uh, one of the members is across the street for me, so I hear about that right. pretty regularly. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's just a, you know, it, 
So we maybe, don't need to make a big deal about it tonight. Else, uh, the policy yeah. should be we should yeah. attend to them. No, in, in my world and in my way of thinking, we were going to do the dredge project. When that dredge project got completed and all the work that had to go that, we were immediately go to our local things we had to do. The problem is we've seen how long that stretched out, the issues we've had with this. Um, we are behind on our sequence, uh, and we know it's important. It's, it's, it's down in there and stuff. We have to, we've done all the work to do those things, but taking that dredge project on with this dredge project going on and stuff, the, the sequence is supposed to go after, and we are hoping back in the day that the dredge project would be done, long done by now, and we would be probably halfway or, you know, through the, the local <laughs> dredge problem. But it just hasn't fallen out that way. But we know that's that's very important next step. It's just it's just the placement and the sequence of, of doing these things. But that is on the radar of our of what we need to move on because we know we've, we've seen the results and explained the results of what we need to do. And, and hopefully we don't have a problem like we did before and somebody putting us in court for seven years before we can get that local dredging done. That's true, um, too. Yeah. Um, you got to remember, and that person's still around, um, we were held up on those type of dredges locally and stuff. We were held up for seven years. Ouch. Seven years in continuous court things before we completed the project yeah. ready to go of all the local areas and the local niches that we needed to do and we were held up in court for seven years on that issue. Um, somewhere we may have the history or something to give you some read to see that nightmare that went through. I, obviously, police chief and not worrying about was the city manager's problem. I really didn't care about it back then, but that's the thing you're running into. This is not a simple thing. Okay, we can jump in and dread. There may be content. There's permitting. There's people can contend. The, it's it's a product. But believe me, I understand what you're saying, and that's of high concern. We need to get at and we need to do so. Thank you. I didn't want to make a big deal out of this. I just no, no, it's uh, well about. taken, I think. Um, um, it, any, go ahead. The uh, outer opening, I didn't understand some of the, uh, what they would do with the sand out there. Yeah, so what they're proposing to do is, it's called in situ, basically just pick it up and move it to a place where it's not going to be a problem, where it's outside of the channel. Um, deeper water or whatever. Uh, they don't have to move it or pump it like we're doing for this dredge to right. an up the disposal. I understood disposal. that part. Yeah. But do, do the, what do they do? They make a sandbar? Uh, okay. I don't like, know where they you know, when you go out there and you see shoals on the left, left side or on the south side? That's where they're going. Okay. Uh, the the cuts that we're talking that lead to the waterways inside and out the bayou, don't we need a permanent spoil site to be able to do that type of work afterwards? The outer cuts or, or you mean no, inside? The, the cuts in and around the bayou. Yeah, they all need uh, a local permit, just like this one needed, uh, the river channel itself needed a permit. And that was the other issue. It took a lot of time to get those permits from uh, DEP. A spoil site. Do we need a, a permanent spoil site to be able to do the other parts in town? You mean the the uh, spoil islands do a cut through those? Yes. yes. Uh -huh. Okay. And it, no, I just uh, had residents reach out about the outer cuts and it's being handled now and it's all going to be completed together. Then we're, it's getting done. So appreciate it. That's, uh, well, thank you. You're right about that. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else? Is there any more other projects you want to do before we open it up and ask if there's any of the board's concern? I think that's pretty good. Any projects that any of you want to talk about beyond what Mr. Roberts talked about? I've got several of them that I just need I a have quick update. Three baby on. ones. Go ahead. I think. Baby ones. <laughs> uh, let me see so I don't forget them. And they're probably all been attended to, but I just wanted to make sure. Um, one of them was we recently submitted and received the placemaking RFP. It's finalized or whatever. Um, but I've heard that it's going to be delayed as far as its implementation until maybe as, as long as late March. Um, this the, might be rumor. The plate making? Place making. This is for the, the sponge dock area project where the they went out and got a consultant to yeah, do that. Yeah, let me, um, yes, there's the, the. it's not a, a hard, it's not a brick and mortar project. It's a, the, the project coming out of the planning department for the 
uh, characterization of the Greek town character oh, district. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just the wrong and place the for me to yeah, stop. It's closed, but there's something on the street that it won't be actually considered until the March time frame. That's not true. As far as, again, this, these are the brick and mortar type projects, not the, the other issues yeah, and stuff. Right. But this my, underst right my understanding, the, the, the fir there's going to be a, the review is, I don't know if the exact date is set, but uh, um, to go over our process of bid selection of the two brigs to bring the bid back towards you. I don't know what any delay is. I thought that was already done, that they had picked, picked uh, um, whatever, picked a respondent and that it was just sitting there. This is what I heard, but I, anyway, maybe this is not you. the right thing. But we'll talk about it Yeah, offline. yeah. Okay. Is, um, there, is there anything else, Vice Mayor Lund? Not bricks and mortar, no. I, I can bring this small stuff up later on. The only thing I want to add is, yeah, I mean, I don't want to do your job. I, I know you know how to do your <laughs> job quite well, and thank you Thanks. for it. Um, you know, all of these first page that I've looked at are all important. Um, the only suggestion I'd make, and I'm, I could probably be speaking, uh, is if there's any smaller projects that can get done to lower the amount of them that are on here, that's a, Amen. Like, like I said to <laughs> Renee the other day, one of those quickie projects that you can get off our list. Um, you know, because you also know the availability of people, you're in the midst of the negotiation. None of us up here are in the midst of the negotiation as it's going on. So you know that if you can get somebody to get some of these projects off our table, it would help us. Mm -hmm. I know the bigger ones um, are a little bit more detailed and more difficult to deal with. Um, like I said, the whole first page here is where my interest, and I'm not knocking the second page, but I could just, for some reason it seems to have, that became um, a little bit lesser, even though they all need to be done by all means, uh, the, these are the ones that look like they're the bigger projects. So, but you have to dictate which way. I don't want to tell you which way to go on these. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say. I just, I don't want to, you know. And thank you, you did a lead in for me. Um, well, I don't want to micromanage yeah. someone no, who's no, doing a job, no. yeah. You got to remember, what you see and the product that you see and the columns and everything, that evolved over even boards before the mayor was on the board. This, is never, this was something that was brought to us that, that was wanted by the commission. Um, we configured it that way. Um, and it's one of the reasons why I said it tonight, we want to hear from you because I want to sit down from my level and, and do some adjustments to this. this is, I, I'd, like to, I'd like to go in from our from our day-to-day -day operations thing and, and change this list. It, it's a little bit, there are reasons why all this and this list was done that way. Okay, we've got, we've got a board here, we wanna put something together, but we wanna hear what you want. That's a good example in the rest of you when you come. I wanna hear what you want, because I wanna change, I wanna change that. that. That was not a staff generated document, that was a commission generated document over probably three, four, how long have we been? Three, been, four years. Five, I've been doing maybe? these for about five years. This project status. Yes, that, that was a commission generated form of what they they want. Um, well, we, you know, we listened oh. and went to it. I'd like to, from hearing some and then hearing tonight, I want to make some changes and some different things. I want to hear what this board what this board wants to see and stuff, and try to put that together a little different. And so, so what what I heard from you is is the kind of feedback. We're looking for where we can all talk together instead of talking individually so everybody can weigh in together and know, okay, here's what everybody said. When we come back and you see the new proposed form, hopefully it meets what this board wants um, and wants to see on a, on, on, a, on a project list like this. So, Well, when I leave here and I drive up Orange, that's the next thing that's always on my agenda list because I go bouncing down that street. <laughs> I just meant that. We don't cute. even charge you for that. Yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> it's a shocking shock, <laughs> shock absorber test. And that's a good one, real fast. <laughs> Where are we with Orange Street? Because that's the one that's asked a bunch and we didn't have it on these sure. trying to get through the time, right? Orange Street, right now, where is that? 40%. And I have, I just got my final rendering today that I'm happy with. I've been going back and forth with the design engineer. From here, I want to go to uh, public input. 
we're, we're to the point now we want to take the, what we've done to public input. Um, so just to update on that project, that's where that You know, it is interesting. I've not gotten any resident complaints on speeding on that block. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Just so Traffic you know. control, yes. <laughs> um, I have one other comment that I forgot about. Um, there's apparently that's true. somebody looking for grant funding opportunities for a flashing speed indication sign by the elementary school. Yes. This is not something we need to wait on. This is how much can it cost to put in a flashing speed indicator sign and why does it need a grant when children's safety are involved? This is, it's I get upset old. when I see stuff like this. It usually doesn't take long. No, that's the, that's, that's why. Um, that's something. It's nitpicky, but I got an email. To, I got an email today on the progress of that. That's not going to be dependent. On, we were there's one avail, readily available, fast to get possibly, but but that is not going to be dependent on that. If we're if we're ready to go, there's some other things where we're getting not dependent upon getting a grant no. to do this. Okay, well, no, that. we just want to say we're in the there's an availability of a quick one, a quick traffic one, yes, a quick right. that we're looking at. Yes, but believe me, that's not going to hold up. To that's not going to hold up. In fact, we got an update that came in today. I just didn't get a chance to read oh, yeah. it. Yeah. I just saw it was an update on 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 where we are. So I'll let you I'll let you know that. But that, it's not grant dependent. Oh, I just looked at this and I saw that. Well, that's ridiculous. I think they just put an ad in there. They thought there's a quick place they could get some money from, but. We've got plenty enough. We're, we're not holding it up because okay, of that. Okay, we spend enough time on flashing lights. I have a, some input. When you sit on the school safety transportation board, as I do, they will start off every conversation saying they have an unlimited amount of money mm -hmm. to put flashing lights everywhere. When you ask them why they're not there, it's a whole nother story. So yes, I'm just You're correct. Well, no. <laughs> It's a very interesting set of circumstances. Safety, safety. I mean, I yeah. think that's what Vice Mayor Lund is yeah, saying. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and could somebody tell me one more thing too? And this is just for my own edification because I, I don't know every area of the city. On Mellon Avenue, we're we're doing a like a another thing on Mellon Avenue to Mellon? to for a left turn lane for some place I didn't recognize. I'm sorry, um, Stonehenge. Oh, for mirrors. Is that what you mean? Yeah, on the end of mirrors, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. So, so what's all that about? This is a, a turn lane? What, what number is it? Um, it's way down the list. It's number 16 on the, on the uh, other important projects list. I got it. I know what you're yeah. talking about. Okay. You're talking about the mirrors extension, mango, the mango piece. Yeah. Um, I yeah, we had to go back and works. redesign it. This is one of those where I had to pump the brakes <laughs> with the design engineer uh, a year ago because the, the construction cost was coming in too high. So we redesigned it, and I've got the construction cost down now. But I had an opportunity um, when they redesigned it. Tell them the redesign, exactly where it is. It's, oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. It's the section of, of Mears or Mango between um, Distin and um, US-19. US 19. Right. Mm -hmm. I kind of figured that. I just didn't. I looked on a map and I couldn't find, find where, where this particular place was. So I'm going like, why do we need to put a special right. left turn lane right. in there when I never see any traffic coming out? Of no, it's not a left turn lane. It's a right turn lane. A right turn lane. Yeah. So it's just a widened shoulder there, so we don't have cars stacking up into the travel lane. Uh, okay. They, yeah, they have an entry gate. Because it's gated. That entrance it's gated, is gated. And and so cars waited at the gate, and the, the residents there expressed a concern that the cars were backing up into the road when they were waiting for the gate to open and they were worried about accidents happening. So we, I was able to fit in a turn lane, a small one, but. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah. I, just, I just looked at it and just didn't know where it was. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. Bob, you touched up on the, the Bayshore septic to sewer project and you had mentioned something about a, a gravity line or, or will, will there be a lift station over there? So these are going to be individual pump stations that pump to an existing lift station. Okay, that's uh, down over by Seminole, I believe. Um, no, I think this is the one on um, Bayshore, Bayshore at the Bayshore Heights. The, okay. This is one that we actually paid for the developer to oversize it so we could have this future build out, and here we are being able to use that now. That's nice to hear. I was uh, hearing from some residents who were concerned about a big lift station on their property, and right. I, you know, I said, hey, 
we'll see what the designs come out to be. Uh, I did want to touch up on the Orange Street project. If you can uh, look to consider in some of the project design, um, see if you can get some more of the right of way on the north side of the street between Hibiscus and Safford Avenue, mm -hmm. just because there, there's a, you know, first Fridays or even on the weekends, that it's a very congested area when people start moving around there. If we could get a little bit more width to that road, it'd be appreciated. Yeah, one of the alternatives does include that option. Cool. And uh, I know there had been some discussion about diagonal parking somewhere along that route. If, there, if the road's wide, wide enough, it'd be great. It's not. No, it's not. Okay. So <laughs> we'll get that out the way and we'll try to get the road as wide as we can for uh, the flow of traffic. And um, Annual, sh annual street paving, what, what do we have, what streets are we referring to with? Uh, That's why we have Tom and Paul here in case some questions Tom. come up that, <laughs> that dealt with, with them there. Yeah, that's the uh, biannual resurfacing. It's not reconstruction, okay. just resurfacing like we did uh, Riverside a couple of years ago. Sure. So we have some other streets coming. Tell us board how we go through the process of uh, the process of selection for those. Yeah, they're evaluated. Uh, first over here, uh, we, we put a list together, of course, the drivability and the amount of, of uh, residents it affects. Uh, then we look into whatever is, uh, utilities are underground, whether they need attention or not. Uh, take that in consideration, then we build a list from that point there. Uh, and then whatever type of surface I'm going to put on. Sometimes I resurface full <clears throat> inch and a half asphalt. Sometimes I'll do a micro servicing like we did at Riverside. So I should have that list ready to go probably sometime in the uh, beginning of March. Thank budget, you, sir. Budget, we deal with that at the budget time. This will be the ones that we are budgeted for this year. And mm -hmm. then, yeah. Yes. No other questions? Yeah, I'd be really interested in seeing the list. Sure. It's actually on, on, on online. Because people so. ask, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're estimated Mark. It's probably going to be more likely the new board, the meeting, probably, probably the second yes. meeting in April with the new yeah. board is probably going to be probably going to be the second meeting. I've got it tentatively yes. set. Hopefully, um, in my goals to, to to get it to one of those first meetings with a new board. Once the evaluation is done, I'll bring it to probably to the first meeting. So yes. But we'd be able to have the information to you ahead of time before the board so you can look it over and talk to about you. When we got, we, you don't have to wait for the board item. We'll get it to you as soon as it's done. It's we'll, not that I want to tell you what streets uh, to resurface. I just want to see what, what the plan is. We, we do have it on, online over here. I can show you the list we have there. We just haven't finished evaluations, that's all. Okay. Uh, I agree with the uh, vice mayor on prioritizing things that have to do with public safety. Uh, obviously street crossings and all that kind of stuff um, commissioner now don't get too aggressive on taking up land on Orange Street <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and uh, I, I want to thank uh, my colleague uh, Ron Herring for this amazing spreadsheet Ron you did a great job he ran this by me. I said, it looks nice. Oh, and I'm sure he's watching. I told him he could stay home because I know. Ron, uh -huh. If you, any of you don't know, Ron lost his number two and his number three within a week's time. So oh, someone who has a one, two, and a three now is, just, is, is one, two, and three himself. Um, but he put a lot of thought into this and getting the colors right and all that. So he did a good job, Ron. OK. Um, we still have to hear from Mr. Smith and his crowd tonight. Yeah, right? it's going to okay. be real short. And, no, no, that's okay. And you might ask some of the that's questions right. of him. The night's still young compared to some of our meetings. Yeah. <laughs> um, on, on the Anklo River, the Army Corps is going to be here in February, right? Yes. To discuss the outer cuts? Yes, the 28th. Okay. 28th. 28th, okay. I did confirm that today, by the way. The, um, the Orange Street improvements, I had a, uh, I, I'm sure that's going to, I know we've got a lot of issues, diagonal parking versus or linear parking, how much room there is and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing I asked the city manager about is we need to get a little smarter as far as the timing of our projects. Uh, given you know. Epiphany and some of the processions, there's a better time of year to actually break ground on this project, get it done before the following uh, year uh, or the, the next events come. So that's the only thing is to be a little sensitive to that. Okay. And you can time that to your design work as well, to, right. you know, for balancing it out. Uh, city hall clerks, 
uh, restoration. I know it's imminent, right? Mm -hmm. Good news. That's a good news one. That's but go ahead. Just the real fast version. Um, we just asked the contractor for an updated schedule. They were telling us a month ago that we we're going to start March 1st. I still think that's the time frame, but I'm going to give you an updated schedule as soon as I have it. Okay. And yeah. just remind the commission and the public and stuff what that contractor did about getting the materials before he started tearing. Just remind them because that's some of the that's some of the things we need to start looking and thinking out of the box with with contracts and stuff. Tell about what we learned from this contract and what he did, which was in sure. my mind very good for the progress of a project, especially for the public seeing it when they see something and then nothing going on for two months or so. Just let everybody know what this contractor did to hopefully have a smooth build process for this. Yeah, well, uh, you pretty much covered it there. That knowing the sensitive nature of this construction project and how it's going to be pretty disruptive, um, this contractor chose to pre-order all their supplies, put in their long lead items first, so they're not going to have to, just like Mark said, start and then stop and then start. The whole idea is to get everything in there, get in and get out, get it built efficiently. So awesome. fingers crossed, that's the plan. Okay. The, um, the one thing about the format of this report I told the city manager is that um, when you take a look at the one from July and compare it to this one, there's a lot of things that are 100% the design, but there's zero construction. But then you look to the right, it's changed from something to out to bid. And there isn't anything there that, unless you feed, read the fine print, that shows that it's out to bid. So you get this impression maybe nothing's happened in six months, which is not the case. That's the one thing that I was uh, telling the city manager we need to kind of move it from something that I, in, in, uh, he and I have had some kind of, um, you know, just one-on-one -on -one conversations uh, as far as the, this form and then um, maybe something a little more practical from a project management perspective and what you understand and how you can explain it to us rather than we misread something into this and then all of a sudden it reflects badly on the staff. That's the one thing I, I want to avoid. So I think that's another objective that the city manager is going to have uh, with his form. Um, the um, I'm fine with getting a normal project management spreadsheet. I said myself, I'm fine with getting a normal project management spreadsheet, but it may be too much detail for him. Well, I mean that's something for he, I'm sure the city manager will work with us to come up with something more. But I'd really like it to be tied to something. The I mean. From our perspective, when's it going to be done? Do we have the funds? This is your point to talk about what you're eminent with. with Regarding the software, you mean? Yes. Yeah, so um, uh, I've been working with uh, Renee, and we're looking at some software um, that has multiple functions, but one of them is project management and project tracking. And one of the ideas is to create a, a web-based profile, or um, yeah, profile for each project. So you click on a list, a whole thing would pop up and you'd see everything you're looking for in that project. When did it start? What was the budget? How long is the design taking? Are we in bid process, et cetera? Um, Hillsborough County has something very similar. There's a lot of uh, governments that use something like that. We're looking at it. Um, and it might be something that might be a little bit more I, user friendly. I, I think that's excellent. So that's, that's basically uh, to kind of yeah, keep us happy and off your back for that matter. <laughs> so, um, Lemon Street, I know that's um, we're that's out to bid now, right? Yes, in fact, it, it advertises on the fifth of February. Okay, that that now that's a nice project that came up middle of last year. Yes, y'all turned it around, and of course, one or two residents on that street kind of helped with the pressure. Sure, sure. But sure. now it's out to bid, which is good, and I was very happy to see that. Um, the Hope Street seawall is complete. Mm -hmm. Roosevelt. Uh, street seawall is nearly complete. Mm -hmm. the, um, the Pinellas Avenue beautification, that's something the city manager and I talk about, not the private one, but the public one, and, mm -hmm. and I, if you want to talk yeah, about there. I, I know a little bit about it, but I, I think it's real important to kind of have an understanding yeah. of where right. we are on it. Just sure. a quick overview. There's the emails. If you, someone wanted to do an email trail, there's a lot of email trails going way back in date saying we're almost there. Yeah. 
What you have to understand in negotiation with FDOT, we could have been there six months ago. We could have probably been there a year ago. We could probably maybe even been there a year and a half ago. It's just what we were going to get in the agreement was not going to be acceptable and good for us, and it was going to be putting good money to not what you want. So the time taken on this project is we're trying to bleed them for everything we can from types of trees. Really, one of the biggest thing is their firm stance on what trees, and they're not the kind of trees that this board wants for the beautification. Um, so again, this is not one of those things that we've dragged on. We haven't liked the deal that that FDOT has agreed on, and we've kept pushing and pushing and meeting after meeting and stuff. I think we're close. It may be a disappointment to some because it's going to be more of a sidewalk project as opposed to a tree project, although I think the, the transportation, the walking from downtown and the docks, especially when we're talking about hopefully in 2023 having some connector to connect those things or people can park or I'm going to be bringing you another parking lot deal where hopefully the public can park in the middle of the docks and and the downtown and have some trans so there's a lot of things in the future the transportation the walking transportation is important so so at this moment we're getting finally close although we've said about three or four times over a year we're close <clears throat> give them the update where we are right now and what we're about to hopefully bring to them because we got an agreement with fdot it's <clears throat> not what we really wanted but i think it's going to be the best that we can get in this y yes uh it's, it's been a lo lot longer process than i like i actually had a hair when i started this project so uh <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're down to the point, it's almost like putting lipstick on a pig kind. It's just trying to find what we can get there as far as trees go <clears throat> or some type of beautification. And the, the issues we run into, of course, is uh, lack of uh, right of way. It's not very well right away. Some places only five or six feet. Uh, uh, telephone poles, lights, uh, I mean, uh, overhead wires, underground utilities. It's been tough. And then, of course, when you do put trees in, you have to consider how much traffic comes on those streets, and of course, the sight distances. So it's been a it's been a real tough one. But um, we want to say, we need to tell them the main the main issue with all of this and stuff. Sight we were told if we change one tree or one tree that we had to move all the tree wells from the front to the back. To the back. Yeah. That's why it's been so long because it wasn't the case we can put some extra trees in. If you do anything, if the DOT was going to demand us take them all that whole stretch take them out and put them elsewhere. So, so you couldn't plant another tree there? Oh, any, any tree that's no. actually, yeah. I was always wondering why there's always, no. all so, so why a year you think it's solved and we got that edict, that changed the whole ball game. Yes. So that's unemphasized because again, you know, we're getting a lot of blame for that, not, not here, but out yeah. there, you've been talking forever, but that was the, one of the main hurdles we had. Um, that was one so where are we? Yes. So we're not. That's why we're not going to get the trees we want because we're going to have to go where we can, where we can, which is which is a lot less places on the back end of the sidewalk. So, so go ahead and continue. And then as you put trees, of course, any tree that's existing there now can stay. Once it comes comes gets knocked down or removed, then you have to go at least five feet off the front side of the, uh, the uh, curbing, which gives you very little room to put any type of tree in. Uh, <clears throat> So that's some of the challenges we had there. Then, of course, the other challenges is sight distances, too. So trying to move, move a tree, put a tree in, consider sight distances, consider overhead wires, especially on the west side of the roadway, really become a real challenge. We, we do have a plan. We're three quarters of the way through. We're almost, almost done with it. It's going to be a lot more of ground covering. Uh, we've already come, we already have a, a plan to put uh, repair sidewalks. There's a lot of sidewalks that have to be uh, repaired, replaced, uh, maybe moving a couple of uh, uh, plantings, a couple of uh, uh, islands and all, all. So it's 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 coming, it's that close, and, and I believe that's probably sometime, probably the beginning of the new board, I'll come back with a plan uh, that will, will give us some type of beautification. It's not going to be perfect, unfortunately, but uh, we will have, so we definitely will have something for you. And also, as I mentioned, this is another one of those projects we could probably wait longer and get FDOT to kick in, but we reached that point where I think we're beyond that. It's needed. It's been demanded by the residents. This is one, and we've got money budgeted. We've got money budgeted. So this is one of those ones that I don't think when I, we bring it to the board, you're going to want to wait and see if the next budget or next day we're going to kick in. This is one we really need in my mind. It's been going on so long, we need to put this on the street and do it. It's going to have to be on our dime because we have the agreement. Um, 
But we do have to tell you, they tell us, well, you can put in, we maybe supply some grant money in our processes. To me, that's going to delay things a year, two years, and I just don't think this is one you will stand for, this board will stand for delaying anymore. We've got money budgeted. Um, if we need a little more, we know there may be a contingency more in it, but we're comfortable with that, and we need to bring it to you, hopefully, beginning of the new board, one of the first meetings of the new board, and then go out and get it done. Um, because that's one of those things I sure would like to get started and done before I'm gone. Just get the approval to go forward with it. That would be a check off my bucket um, list. It will be plantings and sidewalk work all in the same project. So. Mayor, Tom, I wanted to ask that those uh, trees being installed, does that include uh, picking out those metal grates or screens underneath? And does that yes. include? My, my intention here is to get rid of those screens altogether because, as you know, the uh, roots as they grow up, they have a tendency to push them up okay. and use what we call a flexi pave, which is a, a great product that actually uh, using a lot of tree wells. We did a couple up downtown and we'll be doing some more, uh, which also is ADA compliant, which is a big issue, too. By putting trees, in, i got to maintain ADA, too. So. That, is that that, that rubber? The rubber, yes, yeah, exactly, yes. Yeah, that, it's not one I prefer, but if the staff thinks so, absolutely. It's, right. it's, it's better for them. The metal ones, I'll kick up and it ends up trip points all the time. We have a little bit of flexibility yeah. with, it, with rubber, but that's the advantage of it. That's used, if Disney uses it, I think it's pretty good for us. So but that product is getting better and more it pleasing. Is getting better, yes. um, remember, we were in some of the first phases. These things yeah. are evolving, and we're starting, you know, as, as products evolve, they get better and better looking and <laughs> a little more pleasing than at than first. So. Yes. Hopefully we'll have the new wave and uh, a nice looking to make the look along that walkway in North Pinellas that could be part of the beautification that look it brings. So we don't want to put anything cheap and ugly and we, that's going to be a important part of the look. So that's um, what we hope to bring to you. Um, Mr. Function, we, we re refresh my memory or at least my vision. Sure. Do we have acorn lights down there? We don't, right? On, not, on not, north, not north, no. On sir. north. Um, but we may, whatever, just keep this in mind, maybe some conduit, if we do the sidewalks, maybe some conduit for electricity, um, for maybe the trees lighting or something like that, something, I don't know. I'd, it's, it'd be an opportunity that we don't want to, uh, conduit's cheap while the work, the, the ground's dug up, so. There's opportunities with those Cobra lights to just do some uh, uh, work off of those. We can pull off of those and just, uh, uh, we, uh, I pull the power off of some of those lights instead of having to run something all the way down there. So we looked at that. So okay, mm -hmm. there are co are Cobra lights though. Um, the other project was um, so we'll be hearing some about yes. that. The other project is the um, we've got it here is a Craig Park seawall, but it's really the Spring Bayou sidewalks and seawall. And um, I know we've got a schedule, um, or at least thinking about it. The only thing that um, again we talk. I, <laughs> Initially, I was sitting there, oh, it'd be great to do the whole thing, you know, from wherever we were talking about by the Tourist Club, which is the, I don't know what we call it these days, but it's the community center yeah, all the way over to um, Reed and Canal. But um, again, this is another one of those timing issues. Um, if we, if it takes longer than, let's say, nine months to 10 months to do half, then probably we should do you know, half and half and, and time it right after Epiphany to the next holiday season. So we, again, I know we're gonna get started on it. I know it's not, and this is what I, this is the other conversation I had with the city manager. Some of these projects are regulatorily challenging, like the dredging, and that holds things up. Some of them are extremely expensive, and that holds things up. Some of them are, kind of expensive, they're not challenging from a regulatory perspective, and they're certainly not challenging from a design perspective. Those things, and I think that gets back to what you're saying, Let those decide, things we yes. can actually work on. The seawall, the sidewalk, it, it's, there isn't that big of a regulatory uh, permit that's required, as long as, a replacement anyway. Um, and then also um, the design of it isn't that challenging because it's going to be a, a typical, I guess, is what we would do on that with a, an overall plan. So it's just an idea of moving ahead with it. Of course, the flip side of that is how do you deal with those individual docks on the north side? So that's what something that we would have to work on. But 
I mean, now I'm kind of have a change of mind. Maybe we should do half and then the other half while we're doing this half work on getting the other thing resolved with the, the docks and things and then move on to that second half when we get done with the first half. At least that's a thought. But mm -hmm. that's all I was wanting to, to mention about that. And again, that's your, mm -hmm. you know, your job and, and Mr. Robertson's job. That's how we want to design the whole thing, but know we were going to build the part, but do the design so we could be working on those exact things while the first part's being done, we could work and be ready for the next phase. And um, there's a couple of loose ends here. I wanted to, um, uh, one, um, uh, it's a minor one, but the Hoffman property, the park, I know you're working on that. We're still talking about that, and, and um, that's not on this list. The, um, um, the, the, the boat ramp property, um, I know you had, is there anything you can say about that? That would be the Stauffer, that five or seven acre site at Stauffer as far as the uh, riparian right yeah the, the the last word we ha we had why don't you tell the board the last word we had on the issue we may have with that inlet and stuff yeah I think the last word was that uh, Stauffer actually owns water and uh, owns property into the water it's unusual so um, access would be challenging I think was the issue. But we would and be able to, if they don't want to sell it, we could do an eminent domain on that as well. I'm sure that's possible. I mean, yeah. And, and that's something I'd really like to, either we're going to pursue it or we're not going to pursue it. That's all I'm looking for. I'm not saying we need to go for it, just an answer so we can move on to something else. Um, we still need to find a disposal site uh, for the next dredging. I mean, there's a couple of things like that that are not on here, but they're not brick and mortar, but they're really now policy this, driven. Mm -hmm. The Stouffer site riparian rights, is there no way for us to negotiate with Stouffer? Because I know those riparian rights, I, I think I was one of the first people to bring them up. You were. Jut out from the other end yes. and go like, okay, well, there's no access here. Is there no way for us to negotiate with Stouffer on those rights? Because it doesn't really make sense the way that they own that little cutout in there and and they're blocking use of that water. I think somebody ought to be able to see There is if they would negotiate, but they're still under the premise that they've got a, a they've got something going and they're not ready to talk until they do. That's why we had talked in the thing of we may be the point if we need it, we need uh -huh. to take it. So remember we're now hopefully something opens up and uh, it's been very quiet. The county's also trying to find out what this is that they have maybe under contract and stuff. Uh, the county is interested in what's going on out there and they haven't been able to use their intelligent method, intelligence methods to try to get an angle of what's going on out there. So both city of Tarpon and, and the county are trying to find out what is this, what is this uh, deal or something under advisement or under contract or- Very interesting or, because they can't really do anything with it for two years. So anything that they're doing with anybody right now is just got to be speculative at best. Yeah. Yes. Any, because they're not even sure in two years whether they'll be able to, to do anything with it again. And when it's that you quiet, know? it's always worrisome. <laughs> it's always yeah. worrisome what, what is going to happen. So that's why we were talking about the option is we, you know, it may be to the point, and we're doing all this work ahead of time to get to that point. You know, it may be a thing if it's important, we can do it. Um, we need to take it. Do um, they not want to talk about that little piece of property at all, or was it the repair? No, because apparently whatever they've got is the whole part, is the whole, is the whole the shooting whole mat. Everything right, is right. involved with what they're doing. They talked in the past about piecemealing it, but whatever this is that they won't talk about encompasses the entire, the entire property. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. And um, I know there's a couple of other property purchases that are on the on the radar screen right now that we'll be dealing with later. But um, that's all I had for Mr. Robertson. Um, uh, I don't, did, well, before we uh, go, is there any questions on any of the parks or anything? Mr. Function is here for the parks or streets or sidewalks. Do you have any questions? Go ahead. I did. This, Tom, this is a safety thing. Every time I, I'm up and down Dodecanese, there's, we have those black uh, extension cords that they plug into for mm -hmm. those are always live correct uh, no we turn them off they sh they shut off on their own mm -hmm. the separate separate breakers okay on each and every pole 
Uh, we have a set of breakers that one go to light, one goes to the outlets. We turn okay. the breakers off. So they're not live. They correct? should not be live. Okay. No. That was no. okay. okay. Related to parks, I, th I think it's time for all of us to consider uh, some pickleball courts of some type. We've been hearing it from the residents, and it it's how it's a growing sport, and maybe we can find a spot to pick it at, and I know it's going to require a super majority vote. So, I'm you, you know, going to second that comment. I always get because of, anyway, you, everybody knows you, why. But. Did you want to go over your project over there at the um, off mirrors? And well, yeah. Well, first of all, the, the layout was doing February 28th, the Parks and Recreation Board is going to make you a presentation okay. on the pickleball cart. They've been looking at reviewing it. They're going to make a presentation. I've also had some talks with uh, some people about the need for it. Um, understand when we're working on the design, um, and doing the design for the Cops and Kids Center, we are looking at an option, again, depending wherever it is, there's, there's a couple locations in some of the preliminary work on the Cops and Kids Center bids of some different locations, um, one where the tennis courses, one over, but whatever the configurations be, um, the ability to fit some courts in, in that project, again, down the road. Um, what the intent is, is is the presentation from the Parks and Recs Board. Um, I'll probably have ready for you some of the options we may be looking for in the future um, to talk about the, the Cops and Kids Project, the land, possibly acquiring some land from the church there. Um, that's some fields where you'd probably come right off Mears and, and park wherever our center is and have a nice walk access to, that's, that's one thought. Um, so, so all that, everything with pickleball is going to start with, the, but we're already looking, planning, and me bringing you some readily available options to think about, discuss, and uh, areas to and go forward uh, with. So. You might want to mention the tennis courts, too, the idea of... Uh, yes, the, the, the other option that, that's going to be heavily the board's area of design and uh, to decide on, and because it deals with the comp plant, um, several ideas to bring forward to you about some of our some of our tennis courts and conversion of them to multi-purpose courts if we, and, and do those. Yeah. The, the problem in my end, and I've told all the pickleball people from the start, is is while we have a shortage of tennis courts in the comp plan, I cannot you know I cannot even endorse or go forward with without dealing with the board and of course this is a good time because we're dealing with changing the comp plan which when the comp plan was done nobody knew what that pickleball was was throwing a you get a can of pickles and toss them across something nobody even had the concept of what the recreation for and stuff but the talk when it's going to come to you is the possibility it's gonna, one could be at, at Dorset Park one could be the the two the two western end ones at Riverside, two is a tennis court, two is a multi-purpose exactly thing. Those two right. things, but, but we can't, you know, somebody said, well, go do that and stripe that now. We need to resolve the issue with the comp. We have to go in the right Other order, because this, yeah, especially this board is one that's saying, hey, we need a comp plan, we need to follow it. And we don't want to jump right in and violate the comp plan until we do the adjustments that this board can make and change that. And uh, again, going back in the history of things, we had no problem with tennis courts when we had the high school. We had tennis courts yeah. at St. Pete College. Um, mm -hmm. I used to go play at the ones at the high school. The schools were open, they were ready. Their courts, their basketball courts, we had no deficiency in basketball courts because we'd go, at the end of the day when school was out, we'd go down to, we'd go down, you've probably been many times in the middle school, and we had, all those courts had big games going on and stuff. We lost a lot of our, our, our compliance with the comp plan when the schools became closed fortresses. We lost tennis courts. We lost basketball courts. We lost a lot of things when those closed. So we don't have a deficiency because we haven't built a deficiency. We had the number we had to do. We just lost them because there are places we didn't have control over. So it's not a thing of, of past any boards not keeping up with the comp plan, but we had some losses because of how things change and, and again playgrounds you know we had playgrounds were counted the school playgrounds because anybody could go in school was in session and play in the playground all of that was part of our recreation and we had a very high city recreation uh, meeting of the comp plan because we had all those resources and we've lost them and now we've had to make up with mini parks and and those type of things to try to make up for those big losses so so um 
yes, pickleball is going to be on the works and stuff. And, uh, and this board, again, we can do some things on multipurpose courts. We can do some things on future lands and stuff. And uh, so there's ability to do things and get started with it. And, uh, and it is going to start with that presentation from uh, Parks and Rec on the 28th. Okay, cool. Shuffleboard courts? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I did want to touch up, and I don't know what we're going to end up doing with the historic shuffle boards at Craig Park, but if, if we could just get them repainted it just to look sharp for uh, just for whatever reason because of their historic value, that'd be nice. So thank yeah. you. That, that's what I was going to say. We're, we're kind of finished up for tonight for this is what we're doing here with Mr. Function and Mr. Robertson, but the budget is coming up. And the, the sort of thing that you said would be put into this year's, I would think, yes, would be put into this year's budget. It's not that big of a deal, but mm -hmm. um, that's what the budget priorities are going to be for that first, you know, that March meeting and stuff like that. It's as much as ours as the public's, and, and then we'll get into it um, uh, from that perspective. There's several things that we're talking about here that really ought to be in the budget. That, that's all I was getting at. Yeah. Yes, sir. And just a fast version of that, Mark LaCourse, the city manager edict is, I'm not doing anything at Craig Park that isn't green until someone else decides. <laughs> because to believe me, it's been parking, bocce ball courts, shuffle ball courts, um, taking it out for building. You've got five different things that come up that people want to do with that land. And that's sometimes the commission is going to decide at some point. If you're talking about green space, Mark will do more green space at Craig Park. But these issues, which are controversial because it's torn, that's one's torn. It'd be good to get a decision from the, from the commission. What do you want there? And then we make it look as good, historic, restore the look, mm -hmm. whatever possible, if you want another option for it. But there's been many ideas of options for that land that, that so much and such contentious that if it's not green, Mark's not doing it, the board needs to do it and stuff. You're gonna so. get the Sounds fair. You're gonna get the Bocce Association coming out. <laughs> oh yeah. So anyway, um, <laughs> go ahead. Were you done? Can yes, we, thank go you. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, that's it is frustrating when you know we want we could do uh, multi-purpose on those courts. I know we, we probably need to change some wording in the comp plan so that it's not just tennis. It says multi-purpose courts because all we got to do is paint some lines, um, and we've got pickleball players who have their own nets. So all they need is some lines going both ways, and and we went over that together. Yeah. and stuff so anyways that's good and the um the uh, also we need a uh some fencing for an additional dog run out in the at the riverside uh area because there is a need and we don't want to keep chasing all the people off the uh the soccer field that have their are running their dogs illegally. That's the first I've heard that one. Oh, well. I'm bringing it up now. So that's one. <laughs> and that's cheap. That that's just all that requires is some fencing. There right? was somebody that was that's uh, fairly prominent. And uh, the city let, let me ask. I want to ask. One, I want to ask one more question. From uh, Riverside Park with his. Oh, dog. inside the ball field. Yeah. Oh. Is a pro prominent individual oh, okay. that, that is in this room this evening. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. The. Uh, <laughs> Um, so let, let me ask you on the um, on the Bayou at Craig Park um, that the whole seawall raising and all that of the sidewalk. When you do that, are doing that half and half. How do you transition from the completed part to now the untouched part? How, how do you how do you transition to that? I have to work that out. I haven't figured right. that out yet. Okay. That would be in the design of started, obviously yeah. the design of phase two would be to work phase one would be to work it and have it blend into the phase two. Yeah. Okay. Well, Thank you. Commissioner, look, I've got a question for you. Sure. The, you, as far as a dog run, you're talking about a a, a dog park. No, well, the, there an area for the dogs. Yeah, uh, some fenced-in area where people in that part of of town. Because there really isn't anywhere. There isn't. You've got the right. dog park on this yeah. um, over here, but you don't have anything on the the beach side. So, if we could have some property uh, alongside, maybe along the tennis court, there's there is a lot of property there, and it just could be. And it has to doesn't have to be an excessive amount. It can just be a run 
where people can take their dogs, let them loose, and, and run. Because right now what's happening is a lot of people are going and running on the soccer field. And then you've got, you know, all, all that yeah. problem that goes with that. So. <laughs> Okay. Budget time? Would that be a budget budget time? Yeah. You'll be you'll be a commissioner then. <laughs> you won't be able to. You want to say something else? I vote yes. Yes, you voted. You yeah, already voted. Oh, okay. Um, that's all I had for Mr. Robert. Uh, does anybody else have anything for Mr. Roberts and Mr. Function? Is this the way you wanted to do it? Yeah, tonight? and then we're just going to do a short presentation, uh, just a little bit on on some of their end. Um, and uh, again, that'll give you another chance if you have any questions on the, the water, the sewer product, that sort of thing, or on these products, you have another chance to ask. They've just got a very short presentation that they're gonna make. And uh, if you do that now, and uh, they know the, the importance of this meeting is more us talking together and not presentations, so it's gonna be a, a brief presentation that they put together. Well, well, Mr. Smith is getting set up. Let me, I, I wanted to say something, um, I'm really, um, remember the last budget, we really didn't introduce anything new. We, we told Mr. LaCourse we want to give you a chance to catch up and stuff. And um, I'm, I'm, I've been using this word I'm, I'm, or saying a little bit that I'm really proud of this commission that you haven't been down or up in his office, uh, you know, politicking for this or that, or which could be done, but I think there's a recognition that we have a lot of things on the table already that are very important to the residents of Tarpon Springs that need to get done before we start our own little ideas and stuff like that, which I'm, I'm very glad to see that. Now, I'm hoping that we can continue on that. Um, you know, we were talking about priorities and the city manager was saying, well, you know, I, I should, uh, you know, maybe we should get the commission's priorities. And I said, well, the natural thing is the commission's priorities ought to be the residents' priorities. And that's where I, I think this commission you're not running around looking for, I'm not gonna mention any projects, but things that really are looking for, the, the idea of buying something and then finding the location for it. That doesn't happen, which I'm, I'm very happy to see. So I'd like for us to continue focusing on those things that we've got on the table, introduce some things in the budget that I think is more a matter of, of money Mr. LaCourse is working on some things like the uh, mirrors, I don't know what we would call it over there at the sports complex, a new sports complex. Mm -hmm. There may be some other locations around town for pickleball court opportunities. And then, and, and the city manager knows how I feel, there ought to be a balance between green space and all these other amenities that we wanna do. And, and as long as it's being done in that context, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm really open-minded about it. So that's all I wanted to say about that. Go ahead. I just wanted to throw a compliment out there as well. Um, I'm always over at Sunset Beach, and that um, mat that we have out there is really great. Uh, yeah. You know, I see it at Sunset Beach. I see it also at Fred Howard Park. And, you know, most people are going out there and they're using it. So I just want to thank staff. I want to thank you uh, for getting it out there. People are utilizing it. and. Uh, it's just, it's just great all the way around. Thank you. Okay. Back to you. Paul. Good evening, Paul Smith, Public Services Director. Uh, with me here, we're just focusing on water and sewer projects and public services. I've got members of our leadership team representing that area. Assistant Director Thomas Kiger and Utility Superintendent Raymond Page is also in the audience. We have, as the city manager mentioned, four slides, and uh, we've been kind of following how you're doing things tonight, so we'll, we'll uh, change a little bit to brief it up. Uh, the heart of this whole thing is two slides that have lists of projects for fiscal year 23 and then another slide with ones that we're still working on from earlier years and uh, we'll just pick several from each of those lists and then if there's any questions on those or any others on the list we'll be happy to talk it through with you so with that I'm going to turn it over to uh, Thomas Kiger and let him give you an overview and um, briefly those projects <laughs> Thomas Kiger, Assistant Director for Public Services. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor Vitikiotis, members of the board. 
Today we're going to give you a quick overview of some of the projects that we have going on in the water sewer utility. Uh, as you can see, we have 94 active project numbers uh, currently that we're tracking. And about 75% of these projects are from fiscal years 22 and 23. So we're heavily focused on you know, wrapping up some of the projects from last year and also implementing this year's projects. Um, most of the fiscal year 23 projects uh, across all those uh, that list are currently in the procurement stages or they're part of an ongoing program such as ongoing sewer lining or ongoing uh, you know, repairs to corrosion control of the different facilities, that sort of thing. Uh, we do have 12 major projects that are ongoing from fiscal years 21 and 22. Uh, of those, three of them are currently in the design phase, uh, three are in procurement, Two of those are in construction, two are complete, and we're essentially closing them out. Punch list items are substantially complete or closing out invoicing. And uh, two are on hold. Those are both related to holding the funding for the Beckett Bridge projects. Here's a quick overview of some of the major projects from fiscal year 23. Uh, in nope, these are not uh, necessarily the most important projects, but uh, what we're calling major projects for our purposes tonight is any project over $200,000 of budget. Uh, we want to give you a quick overview of some of the, the higher level projects from a cost perspective. Um, obviously, one that you might recall uh, most recently was the cybersecurity project. Um, that was budgeted as a $1.4 million project. We are currently proceeding with uh, procurement on that. We're working with TetraTech as our consultant to help us develop the procurement documents and technical specifications to implement that project. And we do have some positive news in that we have been tentatively awarded an additional $350,000 grant. Uh, that was a grant program that was uh, identified by uh, Susan Linton, our um, IT director and also was brought to our attention by the mayor. And we proceeded with an application and uh, we've been able to supplement our $700,000 in ARPA funding with an additional $350,000 in uh, grant funding from the state, you know, pending completing the, uh, the Which grant, grant agreement. Which grant program was this? I'm, I'm sorry? Which grant program was this? Uh, that was originally the federal cybersecurity dollars. Um, it's a long acronym, but ultimately the state elected not to participate in that federal funding, but they had a separate block of funding for state cybersecurity that was uh, unawarded, so they elected to award all of the grant applications uh, from a pot of state funding. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we, we did fairly well there. Um, moving forward, we've got another uh, couple of other high-level projects. We've got a pump station rehab that we're working out the wastewater treatment facility. We'll be replacing uh, four legacy pumps from the when we first implemented reclaimed water back in the late 90s. Um, that'll be about uh, 120 to 150 thousand dollars, depending on the pump costs. Uh, we're also going to be starting on the design work for the 40-year rehab for the electrical systems for the uh, wastewater treatment facility. Uh, that's a project that has been in the budget for multiple years, and it's also been identified in our recently completed electrical and cybersecurity master plan for the utility. And also, we're continuing to make ongoing progress with the sewer system improvements. We're currently about uh, two-thirds uh, expended for our annual allotment for uh, sewer renovations and we're proceeding with additional sewer lining that'll be going on this spring. Um, we do have a few other projects identified. Um, if, at this point, would you like to ask any questions? We'd be happy to provide you some answers. Let me check. Yeah. Vice Mayor Lunt, do you have any questions? Um, I do not. Go ahead. Yes, on the electrical rehab, it's not changing out. You're, you're running a Siamese type, an auxiliary, um, system so that it can be switched over at one shot or this will be to replace the existing master control centers for the wastewater treatment facility they're both they're at end of life and so the general plan we're, we're just starting on design on it later this week actually but the goal will be to develop an entire new master control center build it in place and then uh, basically you're correct switch off the old system and switch over the new one so the operation is seamless Thank you, that's what I was curious. Because you, it, the one we have now would not be a secure, uh, it was not, when it was put in, it, it, there was no thought given to security in those days, correct? It's largely analog, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Two or eight, two more. Um, I have no comments. Okay. Um, You know, it, it's hard for a resident to kind of look at what you do and say, well, why is that important to me? But they don't realize that it 
translates to money in their pockets. And so um, the one thing that all of our projects that we do, um, at some point it may be worth kind of looking at them from the standpoint of identifying them as cost savings projects rather than try, trying to keep up with technology and things. And we have a, um, our rate study, I think is, is it this year or next year? The sewer rate study. Remember, we're going to have a yeah. it, we we're going to have an update on the sewer rate to see whether we can. You remember when it is, Paul? Or spring, right? Uh, it's this year. Yeah. Okay. This year. Yes. It's an update, right? To kind of double check to see where we are. That uh, is going to be real important with what you've got up there. How it <laughs> translates into improvements of efficiency and cost and things. That's going to roll into your into the rate study that, and, and again, it's not gonna be maybe the near term, but maybe in the out years to maybe show some goals or targets that we're looking for to try and achieve those. Because um, I don't know if it's changed, but I remember way back, the cost of increases in water and sewer were directly proportional to regulatory changes, not necessarily technology or anything. For example, the, uh, um, um, maximum contamination levels of nitrogen were increasing. Um, and so you had to allow the water to remain in our system longer for, if I've got it right, the bugs to eat and reduce the amount before it actually went into the river, for example. That cost money reduces our, our uh, capacity at the treatment plant. So those are the sort of things I would from just feedback from me that I would like to see how you would incorporate that into your, into your capital projects, um, uh, efficiency uh, versus technology, and certainly the cybersecurity is an absolute, that gets into safety and uh, s that sort of thing, which is, is, is just some, a thought on my mind I think would be important. And then, uh, the, of course, the, uh, how that translates through is, is, again, as I started out with how it affects the people's rates as far as what they pay for water and sewer. So. Yes, that's definitely something we have in mind and also taking direction from the board uh, and the strategic plan. Uh, we also are just kicking off a new 20-year uh, CIP to try and get ahead of these issues, uh, focus on you know maintaining, we've built out a great utility, we've built out a great reclaimed water system and a good uh, water treatment facility and a very good wastewater treatment facility and uh, we wanna focus on what it's going to take to continue to operate those and maintain a high level of service over the next 20 years. And that'll be a component that will be goal based that will be going uh, considered as part uh, conjunctively with the rates and also looking for uh, other funding opportunities will be part of our master plan uh, scope as well. Is there anything as far as the uh, our, our current water treatment facility as far as any discussion of obsolescence of any point in the future or maybe we should be thinking about long term replacement or, or, or we're good to go for the foreseeable future. Is that pretty much it? Okay. Yeah, the, some I'm of the key a, items. I'm getting an affirmative from Mr. Page who operates the plant, okay. Yeah, that, that will be something that we'll be looking into is looking at all the assets in yeah. uh, both facilities and making a plan over 20 years uh, for replacement. Uh, obviously the facility for the water plant just came on in 2016. Uh, None of, in our last 10 year CIP, none of the major items in that facility would necessitate replacement in the planning horizon, but now we're extending things out to 20 years based on DEP guidance. They're requiring us to go out to 20 year financial planning for wastewater, but not for water. But we're gonna do it for both and make sure that any major items that are in both facilities or out in the distribution and collection systems are included uh, in the, uh, the master plan. Okay. I'm good. Last thoughts, Vice Mayor Lund, anything on that? Uh, no, I understand we're all so uh, should be expecting a report on general facilities maintenance. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that report at the end of the month, but I think you guys are doing a great job at keeping everything together and I'm looking forward to uh, this longer range plan. You know, there's that constant, uh, what do you call it, in, in, in drumming in the background as far as water line replacement, yellow water, the whole thing, we just have to keep working at that. And the more visibility the residents get as far as the amount of effort that you do every year and, and the light at the end of the tunnel, I think that would be helpful uh, rather than thinking that we're just reacting 
to the problem, which we're not. We're being proactive in, in doing a, a controlled replacement. Um, so anyway, mm -hmm. Commissioner Lech Kulianis. That was an easy one. <laughs> doing a good job, guys. So did, uh, did you have anything else? Uh, yeah, we do have a quick update. We're going to go might. double or nothing with another okay, slide. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, we do have a quick update on just a couple of ongoing key projects. Um, uh, Bob already touched on the Bayshore project. We want to bring that back to you because it was an ARPA-funded project that you previously had uh, seen over the summer. Um, one major project that we're working on currently, and we wanted to bring it back to show to highlight, was the uh, Lyman Huey lift station replacement project. Uh, this is a project we started on the design uh, two years ago. Uh, the design was completed. We got to our engineer's opinion of probable cost. We had $1.1 million budgeted, and the cost estimate, again, came in quite high. But because the board authorized us to have more procurement options through the JOC contract, we're working with a contractor right now. And by being able to work with the contractor directly and not have to go out for this uh, larger open-ended bid process, we're able to identify a contractor that can do the work and wants to do the work, and we're able to bring that project back under, back under budget. Um, the other projects that we wanted to highlight really quickly were the solar efficiency project. That's phase two of the solar program. Uh, that's proceeding right now. We're in construction phase. We're just getting in our first list of submittals, and that'll be constructed this spring. And also, we're wrapping up the chlorine conversion project, which was another large uh, project to renew and uh, you know do another life cycle extension on a, a key component of the wastewater treatment facility. Uh, that one took a little while. There was some significant, uh, you know, delays with materials and things like that in 2021, as many people might recall. But the good news is, is we're wrapping it up, and it's also going to come in $40,000 under budget, which is nice. Okay. Any other thoughts, Paul? No, just happy to answer any questions on the ones on here or any others. I just want to thank you. I think you're doing a great job. And you know that's what I always tell you anyway. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that goes to the team. I mean, and this isn't just in our department. Well, you relay it for me. Yes. And we know it's sincere because if we're not, you're certainly going to tell us that also. If I do not. both ways. Yes, sir. <laughs> Go ahead. I did want to thank the mayor for bringing up the the water situation that we hear from residents, and you guys have a, a planned approach to it all. And just thank all staff out here today. I know there's a lot of pressure on on you guys, especially with the capital improvement projects we got going on. And, uh, uh, you know, we're going to inconvenience the residents. And those are my three key words. But uh, this board's, you know, we're up here to for, for the challenge. And staff, we appreciate it. Well, we have the chance, and hopefully people are watching are going to watch this. And we see a lot on Facebook. We see a lot of it. Please tell the procedure of any citizen that thinks their water is bad, has brown water, the fast ash, because the one that don't follow just communicating in Facebook and call us. There is a fast process where you have put together that we go out there, just analyze from the point of citizen call you, listen, I've got this water and it's a problem. Tell the fast process a citizen can do much faster than saying it on Facebook and letting it sit for months and months afterwards. What, what you do and how you activate the team with Ray and everybody on that problem. Something we realized a long time ago is water is even more sensitive than any of the other utilities because it's something we put in our bodies. And um, so our response needs to be at least as good as the cable company, I would think. So when we get phone calls, people call into the, really any one of our phone numbers, um, our main number, 9425610 or the one at the RO facility. Um, people will get that to an operations um, manager who will dispatch um, someone from either our water distribution crew or one of our um, treatment plant operators to go out and evaluate the situation. We'll take water readings on site and uh, advise the customer of what we're seeing on our side of the meter and also we'll help them try to diagnose what's going on on their side of the meter. Many times we run across probably the most common situation is an older plumbing system. Uh, you know, that the customer's private system, but it's an old galvanized pipe. You know, these small pipes and over time they rust on the inside and that water, especially if it sits in those pipes without getting a lot of use, will be an orange, terrible color. And, you know, the first thought is what is the city delivering to me here? And many times it's a matter of, um, uh, looking at how that water's flushed within the home and possible other solutions that we can help advise. Sure. 
But again, we, you know, we recognize, and as I say, you know, water and people drinking home is very important to us. And, and Paul and his team has put together a system that any resident with a problem makes the call and it's fast results to them and fast results. If it's something on our side, we immediately go into, it's not a wait unless the price, it's an immediate fix on our side. And if it's on their side, we try to help advise them the best we can about the problems on your end and suggestions of how they have to t do it. So, so it's available, please residents use it and, uh, and uh, we like to take care of those problems right away. And you've put together a great system. The ones who use it, believe me, I get calls all the time. Thank you for your fast response. Uh, um, you know, feedback from everybody you deal with, if they call here and, and get results is, is very, very positive and a good light on the, on the city. You know that um, citizens care about their sidewalks, their streets, their recreation, their um, you know uh, public safety. But the one thing we take very much for granted is is water, right? The, we just take it for granted. We turn the shower on. We get water. We you know get some nice water out of our faucet. Put it in our coffee maker. It just the other things you know garbage pickup. All those things we see happening, and you know we we expect them. But water is so critical. And like you say, it's it's such a a, a sensitive thing that can go bad this way or that way. And and you guys. But I, I you know I want to just say in, in summing up, I, I assume we're getting close to the end of this meeting. Um, you know, Mark, you you know everybody find something to be upset about, right? I mean, you, that's, that's your whole life, is getting these emails, I'm upset about this little thing in, on the sidewalk, I'm, a, I'm upset about these plants, I'm upset about something. But when you think about all the mechanisms to make this town run, you know, whether it's our police department, our water, and our roads, and our garbage, and all that stuff, and you are the, uh, you know, the orchestra leader, that makes all that happen. And uh, I just wanna thank you. And I don't think you get enough thanks. You definitely get enough blame for stuff. But I, I wanna give you, you know, the public thanks as a citizen for all you do. And I didn't realize as much until I kinda got involved in this game we're in. And I realized you, got, you work hard. And it's a hard job. And I just wanna thank you. I appreciate it, thank you. Okay. Any, <coughs> excuse me, anybody, any, anything else? No. If we, if we talk you? about the water people, and you already have heard this from me dozens of times, your people are not only <coughs> great when they're reactive, I've actually found them to be proactive, right down to the meter reader, stopping at my house because he thought he was, I was using more water than normal. Mm -hmm. I'm wanting to tell me that you know, maybe it's something I should look at or maybe it's something he should look at. But I mean, this is incredible service. Um, you've managed the transition to chlorine relatively well, um, better than most. Well, I've been in other areas where they've, trans, you know, done that transition over my life. So this is, all in all, I think you're growing a fantastic job. Um, Commissioner Alec Koulianos is, is right. Um, we all take water for granted, but it's uh, one of the most important things that we, we supply to our residents and I appreciate it, thank you. Um, no, I just th thank staff and uh, the, while we brought that up, you know, you, you'll see those posts on Facebook, oh, my water is this color and people will say they call the city. Do, do we have a, a flyer or anything that we can post on one of the city Facebook pages that show the instructions on what to do if they run across that situation. And I, you know, that way I could save it to one of my files and if we see that situation right across, we can just post it or just constantly get that message out to, so they can reach city staff on it. Thank you. Commissioner, I post that all the time, but 
do they read it? You know, you could solve everything on Facebook just by posting it and writing it, mm -hmm. and somebody will come across and just come up with a solution. We don't need these people here. They're just, you know, just I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we're actually, what we're seeing a turn in this Facebook thing. We are seeing actually people, and we're actually getting calls from people, who somebody on Facebook, listen, call the number of the city. They'll be out right the people we're helping are getting on before it even comes to, so I'm like, hey, Mark, they're talking about, because I don't want, they, I get people calling me, you need to look at this, you need to look, but actually the people on, a lot of times are telling, hey, call this one, they do, they're they actually policing for us and uh, and getting okay. people to the right direction. Uh, the citizens are doing it itself, and I, mm -hmm. I like to believe it's the citizens who know about it, we've done something for them, and they're letting their neighbors and stuff know a lot of times, and not only on water, on a lot of other things, these people are reacting and telling them things, um, you know, they're helping direct the people to the right problem before they even get to us. And uh, so that's a little bit of a trend I'm seeing. That's a positive trend of our own residents are, are looking at these things and directing the people. Listen, you need, here's where you need to go and you can get your problem fixed. You're not going to get it fixed posting on here. You're going to get fixed by calling here or doing this or going down there, going down to City Hall. They'll, they'll deal with your problem right away. Um, so our own residents are doing that. That's what you want in the community. When your own residents start doing that for you, then you know these people out here are doing a good job um, when that starts happening. Making them knowledgeable. Yeah. In closing, um, these people, don't ever think these people, they're busy, but they're never too busy to sit down with each of you. In fact, it is so productive, and this board has done a lot of, not just about projects, but other things, coming sitting. You know, we'll give tours of fleet and talks about that. I know we're doing some for, but any issue, any of these projects, you want more understanding of, there are projects that happened way before you were on the board. Any of these things, these people are not are not too busy to sit down with you and individually. You can do get a lot of things done individually. Again, meetings like this with all the things we got going on, it's tough to get these issues out. But these 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 uh, people that I have working for me enjoy you coming in and getting a better because the better understanding you have the better understanding you give the people who ask you, and we get that. So we encourage you on individual projects, on any activities, on operations of a certain segment of that. Set it up, they're welcome, and uh, this is where you can get a lot done. Whereas again, we got so many things on meetings, it's hard to get those things done, but you can get them done there. We welcome it. Please keep doing it. You're doing it probably more than any other board so far. You're doing it, keep that up. And I think that communication works good with the whole team of us and you um, getting these things done. So I encourage that and they encourage it. And again, don't worry about them being too busy. This actually helps them um, um, in what we're all trying to accomplish. I want to thank the staff for being here tonight. And you know, you guys always do a good job and, and uh, there's usually a reason for why things happen. So there's version one and there's version two. City manager and I talk about that all the time. So thank you for, for that. Um, that ends that agenda item. Let me go to board and staff comments. Uh, Chief Young. Uh, no comments, sir. Ms. Jacobs, anything? I just wanted to offer my condolences to the family of former officer Nancy Kelly and uh, her family on her passing. She was, she was very involved in the early stages of Cops and Kids and the Cops and Kids Center. Um, very involved in that process. I know a lot of you came out to Officer Q's thing on Saturday. Um, again, from the start of that, she was very involved in the beginning, 25, 30, however long years ago. She was very influential in building that program and connecting with, with the kids and involved. Um, I think when she retired in 2005. 2005. But yes, she was with us years. in the, you know. At the beginning of Cops and Kids. And yeah, she at, was the the, at, the, at the beginning. So t talk about you, you saw and, saw and heard things about Officer Q touching kids and stuff. She really, in the early stages, was able to touch a lot of kids, too, involved in chaperoning field trips of kids to activities and places. So she made a, she made a big difference in the lives of a lot of kids and, and put her put herself and her abilities into cops and kids and what you've seen. And again, some of the, young, some of the older people you saw there 
started out in Cops and Kids, and you, you saw them Saturday uh, there. It's, you know, part of it is directors of Cops, part of that and stuff. So, um, yeah, she will be missed, and uh, she did a lot for the yes, city. And, and she continued on at the city part-time working over at the rec department. Yeah, you saw Still her at the rec, with and rec activities because she continued part-time at the rec, so it was a, a sad loss. I mean, you know, for these are the sort of people that we should remember for memoriam proclamations and things like that. I mean, we haven't done that. We really need to get back to doing that. Um, I know there's some people that have passed that um, we need to be respectful to give some time to, for the families to grieve, but then after some reasonable amount of time, we should have a, a, a proclamation in memoriam. And I, honestly, I need some help with all of that. So uh, Ms. Jacobs and City Manager of course, or any of y'all, um, need to kind of help me, Chief Young, to, to remind me, just tell Trish and she pass, passes everything uh, by me and, and we usually uh, do some things like that, which is important. Um, uh, let's see, uh, Vice Mayor Lund, anything as far as announcements? I just wanna say thank you all for being here. Um, thank you for the backup material, the succinct explanations, and the terrific job that you do every day. <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just want to thank you all. Um, I, you always take my call. You always give me the right answer. Um, I love Tarpon Springs, and I love what you guys do. So thank you. Keep up the good work. Appreciate you. Hey, just thanks, staff, for everything, for the presentations today, for uh, just a, a thorough discussion. And uh, uh, like we said, we've got a lot of pressure on you guys. There's a lot of capital improvement projects, uh, but we're, we're here. We got your back. And uh, I'm I'm thankful that I'm on this board right now with the with the rest of you, inclu including Commissioner Elect, to uh, make sure these capital improvement projects get done for the future of the city and for the you know the well-being of it. So thank you all. Okay. Um, I've already said thank you. I'm going to say thank you again. Mm -hmm. um, City Manager, of course, there's a couple of things I, I wanted you to to kind of bring up to the commission so they don't get caught off guard. Um, the uh, the, the Facebook post uh, on the uh, Spring Boulevard, Grand Boulevard, Orange Street, um, uh, what's being done as far as the improvement so everybody understands. Yes. Uh, what, could you explain that to Yes, you? and uh, as, as many of you know, we've been working a long time with the county about improvements that intersection and the adding of crosswalks. Um, what began today is, of course, county engineering had to deal and approve it. So. So we posted another update from our original one to show the whole plan of the entire crosswalk and of that intersection, but it did involve from a traffic management, you can't have a four-way stop and a yield on a crosswalk. So those changes are, before we could get to the crosswalk portion, that yield had to be eliminated um, to allow for the crosswalks in there. So we, we posted a second picture of what the end product was gonna be after that's done, the crosswalks. Again, we also know that moving down to Tarpon Avenue in that area, that, that is the next one we're working on um, to improve the ones when Tarpon Avenue ends at the, at the bayou. That's another where the crosswalks we have to work on and stuff. Again, because of the county nature of the road and the county response that we had to work with them and go into their traffic management plan. So to get it done, some of the things you see, you know, was necessary. So um, again, it, 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 it's a system to really improve safety and especially with a large amount of pedestrians that you see in that area now, especially up on, on that area. You see them down Tarpon Avenue, but on that area. So this is the first of pedestrian safety improvements and walkability in the community that we're working on in that area. We know there's other ones. We know there's other crosswalks. We know there's the one that the county's really stickler on, um, and so it may result at the bridge, but there's that up the street from where this one is, um, where Canal Street comes in that there. The problem with the crosswalk there is it doesn't meet the, you've got a curve. And the problem is the criteria of a crosswalk on a curve is the issue with the county. And that's why that's a longer one because, you, you know, obviously, yes, it's dangerous to cross there without a marking, but they're not gonna put markings to accentuate a danger with a curve and not the right visibility for a car to stop because a crosswalk indicates safety to people. You put it there, it's safe. 
And they can't do that if it's really a curve and a visibility problem. So that one's going to take some more work and more time. I know someone brought up, you saw an email today about, well, when are you going to go to, to that one? And believe me, that's working on. Um, but that, the difficulties in there is the curve and the requirements of a crosswalk with a curve coming up. So all those we're working on and, uh, you know, we're subject to traffic design. Um, criteria, so we're continued to work on them, and anybody can call. And, and you know, Officer Boone has been working with Tom and his people, and working with. It's a three effort: public works, police, working with the county um, to get these intersections done. Uh, again, there may be some things that residents are skeptical on because there's some things I don't play like. But because of traffic management, if we want the crosswalks, you know. We have to do certain things, so you got to take the little bad with the main good of safety for the people, the many people especially are trying to cross at that intersection. Yes. Um, the other item is that we um, received a, an email late today. I, you, did you have a chance to look at the Pasco, the Anclo River Park? Comp I saw it. Com I did see it coming. Uh, um, th there's a comp plan change that the county did, Pasco County did, specific for the Anclo River Resort. And they sent us an email today notifying us that that took place on at their commission meeting on January 24th. So we're, I thought that we had that they had agreed that we're an affected party, and so um, Ms. Vincent's still out of town, right? Yes. So once she gets back into town, or I'll let Mr. Uh, uh, Lacourse deal with it uh, to give us a little more information of, of what it is and what it's all about. So and to understand why we were under that understanding too, why we weren't notified. Right. So that, that did, yeah. did you have any questions on it? No, well, shouldn't we've been notified before they made changes? Yes, of course. That, that's yeah. exactly what we're As saying. an affected party, we should have, but. Huh. I was only reading from the phone, which you can't read those things by the phone. I got to get a computer, but when I saw it on the phone, I'm saying, okay, what happened to us? Because they did agree. Um, they yeah. did agree we're an affected party and we we're going to be notified. Uh, why they thought that comp plan change wasn't wasn't I don't know. I'll wasn't ask Jack good. next time I see him. <laughs> um, the other item, did you have any questions on that? No. Uh, um, the other item, the other item I had uh, was the um, we received. A, I don't think the commission got it. The demand letter from the Morgan Group. Did they get a copy of it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, that's that's being addressed uh, by the staff, so it's going to be, you know, they need to do their work. We're letting them do their work. There's, you know, everybody's aware of what's going on, and, and that's the way we're doing it right now. So there's nothing to get excited about um, on that. And then also, um, as far as the, the um, uh, public records request, that huge public records request, that's still an ongoing um, matter and that you'll be forwarded communications as we get them. And then um, on any of this stuff, I would encourage you to um, probably uh, talk to both uh, the city manager and the city clerk, and then they can direct you with regard to who you need to talk to as far as specific information, maybe somebody on the staff uh, with regard to the, the Enclosed Harbor apartment project maybe one of our two interim attorneys concerning the other matters uh, to get some of your answers. Uh, but I just, you, you may see articles in the newspapers about this that, you know, there, there's reporters calling. I don't know that they've called you, but um, we're dealing with that right now through the public information officer, which is Ms. Staley. Yeah. So is there anything else you want well, to Well, I just know all that? you know the sensitivity of anything that that's said. and. You know everything is you know what the sensitivity of that um, and there's so many people involved the best thing to do is get with me because it could be either one of the two attorneys it could be somebody on my staff directing so so the best thing is just to call me and say hey, I want to answer who do I talk to about this and I get you to that person to talk because there's so many people handling different phases of this both attorneys are involved in different aspects so I can tell you that's something um, attorney Salzman's handler or that's something Attorney Kardash is handling, so we can get you the right pen. And the best thing to do is talking with our attorney or getting information from our attorneys on these things. Um, so, so just ask, just get with me and and what you're looking for, and I'll direct you to to who to go to. That's probably the easiest and simplest way. Okay. Any questions on any of that? Okay. Meeting adjourned at 9:22.